a little recap on what's going on. Um, so this is Curse of Strahd. The party is in the land of Barovia, a demi-plane which traps souls for eternity. This realm is ruled by a vampire lord named Strahd von Sarovich. The party has learned um, that, well, essentially their only way to survive, their only way to get out is by defeating him, so they think. The party has uh, acquired three very powerful artifacts to aid them in the fight against Strahd. A sword of sunlight, a powerful holy symbol, and a book penned by Strahd himself. They have also found an ally, Esmeralda Davenir, the protege of a famous monster hunter. The group now is in Arjenvastholt, the old fortress um, headquarters of uh, Order of Knights called the Knights of the Silver Dragon. They have defeated the undead lord of this manor. Um, and that is where we pick I suppose. I think we've got some people hurting a little bit. It me also. Okay, I'll just drag Cyborg is about to bleed out body into the square with me with the panda. No, it's a koala. Wait, koala? Panda? What? Is it's an animal and I don't know what it is. The red panda. The red panda. The panda. No. Look at Discord. I even put a picture. Just Waldo, My just brain Waldo, is a slotted spoon. I don't remember things. <laughs> just Waldo walks over to uh, the uh, the guardian and says, um, Kazan <laughs> says, <laughs> be alive. You see the um, the head kind of <laughs> tilts up and then <laughs> and rolls across the floor. Sorry, Akanda. I shield Snake's eyes. <laughs> so glad I'm dead for this part. He just sort of whoosh. <gasps> there was a little friendly fire and the uh, animated armor seems to have uh, huh? fallen. Kazan says come back alive. I, I already tied that. Kazan says fix. He doesn't like you. Shut up. Kazan says fix. It got in the way. Let that be a lesson to all of us. If we get in the way, we'll get fireballed, just like Kazan. I thought it was an acid ball. Acid ball, just like Kazan. <laughs> You'll get a line. Nice for I, I will, having dragged Cyber's body into the space where the ethereal animal resides, um, I will go and um, just give Akantha a nice big hug. Stroke her hair a little bit. Hug. She gives up. <laughs> All her friends leave. No, we're still here, I promise. Don't fall apart, too. You know, I'm oh. trying real damn hard. <laughs> too late. Look, I'm still alive, and I'm probably like bleeding everywhere. I have literally one hit point. Um, but I'm still alive. You got still a little kicking. something right. Here. Jeswaldo goes in, and with his toe of his boot, he kicks over the body of this uh, lord. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you notice that the skeletal form within it is withered, um, like the ones you saw before. When you felled it, it seemed as if its animating spirit kind of escaped like a breath. And uh, so the flesh is leathery, cracking. Um, more, almost more mummified than um, undead and zombie-like. It's dried and cracking um, as you move it and sort of wasting away like paper. Tell me about and this armor. It, oh, this embodied voice. It is uh, very fine armor. It looks to be um, half plate. There is also um, uh uh, a ring on his finger and a fine great sword next to him. Poke at the uh, armor with my sword. Just chink, 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 chink. Um, it is uh, decorated with, you know, metal sort of silver-like filigree. Um, it is 
uh, very finely constructed, but it appears um, it, as the uh, spirit starts to sort of uh, rush away from it, you can tell there is some tarnish about it, but it doesn't do anything when you poke it or anything like that. It just seems to be solid metal armor. Well, I think this is the first decent piece of uh, heavy armor that I've seen here. Does anybody want it? Not quite heavy. Um, it looks heavy to me. Uh, hmm. um, it is, in fact, medium armor. Yeah. Maris? It looks like maybe? it would fit Maris. I, I mean, if you're giving it away, I guess I'll take it. It's going to cost you I think some you gold. Could but... Use a little more protection, friend. I don't disagree, given that I died. <laughs> <sighs> Um, also <laughs> rolls his eyes audibly. Yeah. Um, also, Maris would like to cast mass healing word on uh, her fallen comrades, um, and Ryan should roll a d6 on fallen comrades when she gets a chance. So that's my question. So uh, it says that the spirit. So for uh, thank you, Applebaum, by the way, for casting healing spirit. But it says that. Uh, so it says you cause the spirit to restore one d6 hit points. Is that the person who casts it or the person who walks? is dropped into it, walks through it. Uh, that would be uh, the um, caster. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So she it. started it and would be able to move it and I'm trying to remember, did the end of combat, did you cast Healing Spirit over Claire to begin? Yes, mm -hmm. I think it was on me such that I was able to get up and deal the killing blow. Right. Yeah. Okay. So... So, what is your wisdom modifier? Me? Apple flood? Yeah. Not a hell of a lot. It's three. Okay, so you have three more uses of it, essentially. You have three more d6s to roll. You can heal whoever you want with those. Including. Uh, I'll just allow it. So we're out of combat. It's a non tense situation. You can sort of we can do that retroactively to get that. and um, Maris cast healing mass healing word. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll that. So how many? So Ryan rolls this. You say three d six. Yeah. Well, I rolled a d six and got three for Ryan. Oh, okay. Uh, so you you've uh, got two so. two or three more two or more two more two more. So roll another two. So. Everyone in the party can add eight points of healing. Lovely. Thank the gods. Lucky that you, Alimus. I'm a little bit hurt. This mm. is a little. Uh... Did you did you get a paper cut? <laughs> That's what. Look left. at who you were oh, well. fighting and what the um, form of the great sword is that you have. Hot damn! So cool. That is an impressive blade, but there is nothing I can do with it. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> love to look at it. <laughs> I eschewed great swords when I was uh, squiring. Wasn't so much the style. I mean, I pick it up, just sort of like hefting it. Yeah. Uh, someone much stronger than I could do a great deal of damage with it, but it is... And I put it like point down into the into the uh, stone of the room, just resting it there. Mm -hmm. It is completely unwieldy. It certainly feels I mean, magical. Do we it? win? Um, we're fine for now, Cyborg. I know we've there's still someone around here that was taking a peek at us earlier, but oh, that's good. Uh, we'll rest a moment, I think. Yeah. Limus, do you want to, um... I'm fine. Figure out what some of the shit is while we take a break? Sure. I'm okay. Should we do it in some safety? If you've got the, uh... The wherewithal. I have the huts that we can get inside. Sure. Sounds okay well, to me. Uh, before we do that, let me look around this room. It does take or while you're doing it, cast. I suppose. Yes. All right. Uh, anyone want to help with this? I'll help look. All right. Uh, um, can you give me advantage? Ethelflad can. I'm 
How about okay. we both roll separately then? Boom! Natural 20. Nice! Don't even need to roll. Good way to start <laughs> the game. Do I even need to roll? <laughs> Nobody else needs to roll for the rest of the night. Let's just carry that. <laughs> yeah. Whole well, um, you know, things can be missed even with a, a skill check of a natural 20, but 21 will be um, enough to get you the um, full lay of the room. You will find secret doors leading to the um, stairs here and here. <laughs> the you will also find uh, a ring upon the finger of Vladimir Horngard as your um, Did book he ever will tell you his name to us. He did not. Um, with some time, though, you would be able to uh, discover that's who that was. He is quite clearly the commander here, though. So did did his look match the portrait that was downstairs? There did was a not. Really, really, oh, that was someone else? Okay. There are so many dudes. <laughs> I'm going to walk over and uh, check out sort of the, the sword and the ring. Mm-hmm. And, let's say... Um... What does the ring look like, DM? Uh, the ring is of very fine quality. It is a, mm -hmm. you guessed it, a silver band that is um, woven. It almost looks like pieces of chain mail bound together um, in the circle. And then set into the middle is a very large um, blue sapphire. Uh, in a rectangular cut. Uh, can I make an arcana check on this just to see if it, if I would have come across any of this in my studies or anything like that? Like, does it appear to be magical in any way or is it just a really nice ring? Oh, sure, make an arcana check. All right, all right. Let's... There we go. And survey says... Survey says suspense. Survey says. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> An 11. Okay. Well, yeah. um, it is certainly of fine enough quality to be um, to be magic. Hmm. Whether or not it is. Uh, Ilarmis, would, sure. would you be willing to, uh, to take a look at this? I, I, I can't quite place it, um, but I think. I mean, it's got the possibility. Cyborg, uh, Cyborg, uh, don't disturb him while he's trying to create a hut. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were trying to put your tent up. He's, he's only done it like three or four times. While he's cut, yeah. <laughs> he's, in, he's chanting, so he just nods at you as he's chanting. Uh, Does Cyborg, anybody Cyborg, else Cyborg. need to talk what? to Commander Peepers before oh, I send I him mean, away? I'm. No, that's not the euphemism. It's probably it's, me yeah, and Cyborg because we were oh. both pretty fucked up after that fight. Oh yeah, no. If I get another hit off Commander Peepers, how about uh, uh, you and I both take one? Okay. Yeah. Right. First one, first one, Claire. Second. Commander one, Peepers Cyborg. will get your eye tonight. <laughs> this is ground control to Commander to Peepers. Peepers. <laughs> oh, D6. oh man. First one. Uh, I'm waiting for our musical episode, guys. Imagine <laughs> just sitting in this chair so year after year. I hate okay, it. thank you. All right. And then that four is for Cyborg. <gasps> Don't read into yeah. it, dude. <laughs> Do you think oh. it was... Goodbye, Commander Peepers. You, this magic that kept this thing alive, or was it just hatred? Can hatred keep something alive that way? I think so. Incredible. If it's similar to the other remnants that we've seen, they're usually bound by an oath or a deep-seated hatred of a, a person or a, a task. At least that's Strat. what my studies. Yeah. Yeah. And he seemed real keen. How on. much do you have to hate in order for that to happen? <laughs> Quite a bit. Okay. Cyber like puts his arms out and then spreads his wings out as well. This much. Ends up knocking 
the live us out. <laughs> Mama said, knock you out. Mm. <sighs> oh, sorry, is... sorry, sorry. I mean, if we were any other place, I'd be excited to sell the great sword and the sapphire ring. Oh. Seems sort of pointless here. Well, how much does it weigh? I mean, it, don't we? Can we just put it in a a, a pack or, or have somebody? I can carry it for the time being. Why? It's not that heavy. Well, fine, but why? Well, it's uh, a relic. It's a magic weapon. Is it? I don't. I don't mean in the in the technical sense. I mean in the sense of this is the sword of a leader. Uh, a commander of a great order that once stood for everything that is against Strahd. Ah, yes, the operative word in that sentence is once. It is... I'm a gesture at the decaying body of this thing. Dead. Sure. But that doesn't mean that it can't be respected. I can't say nothing because I'm chanting. Respect that should be earned, though, don't you think? If this order was worthy of respect, then maybe they would have been able to stop Shrad. Strad. All sorts of people worthy of respect have passed. Just because they died doesn't mean that suddenly we erase them. Well, I'm history. not suggesting we erase them. I'm just suggesting we don't bother carrying their trash around. Well, Does this look like trash? Well, no, it looks very valuable, but if we cannot sell it, then it is essentially worthless, ergo, trash. I feel that the adage of one man's treasure, one man's trash, or whatever the way that it goes, is probably applicable here. If you don't want to carry it around, fine. I will, and I will take the sword from him. Fair enough. You kind of let it fall before you take it. Cyborg catches it. Should, shouldn't drop it. It is a hefty, large sword, but it feels somewhat lighter than you would expect it to. Hmm. In... Wait, it, who, who is that to, DM? Uh, both just Waldo and Cyvor. You know, it is unwieldy, like he said. Just the just the heft of the, the heft of it and the width of the blade. Everything is. Um, it is not a um, weapon of finesse, but it is lighter uh, than you would expect from such a uh, mass of metal. It's incredible. It's beautifully made. Indeed. And here you go, Kai. What else is around here? Just sort of start doing a little exploration of the nearby rooms and such. Okay. Uh, there's a curtain here. You know there is a door here and here as well. Um... Really, by logic, you can assume that down in the um, lower right-hand corner here is another stairwell. So, with the the hut up, that's once that's up, we're safe, completely safe while we're in it, right? All right. Well, I'll just sort of look around. I like use a sword to peek behind the curtain, just to see if anything jumps out at me. I'm gonna run back into the hut. Uh, behind the curtain, you say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and. So you are all just staying in the room until the hut goes up, it sounds like. Yep. Just while those scouting around. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, not going to go far until the hut is up. Sure. If you peek behind this curtain here, so it sounds like is what's happening, you will see... Come on now. <clears throat> A... The empty room. Well, indeed, the um, there is dark wood paneling that covers all of these walls, though. Um, 
and the three windows there are floor to ceiling um depicting what you would assume are holy figures um they are uh, all there are three separate ones they're all clad in white robes and there seems to be an orange sunrise behind each of them uh may I make a religion check of course I think I made a religion check way back when, and I actually was able to identify these as servants of um, Arumanpar or something like that, the uh, the Morning Lord. Um, so yes, as he's he's referred to here as the Morning Lord, you certainly recognize that figure. Okay. Um, three. The other two. Hmm. The iconography is not something you recognize. Fair enough. Do these panels seem... I mean, the rest of this uh, place is so um, destroyed and obviously has seen a great deal of damage. Um, is there any logical explanation looking around why these things are spared, or is it just random? The windows themselves? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, there are other windows intact. You noticed also that there was the one smashed window depicting the uh, Arjun Vast, but mm -hmm. um, there were other aspects of the chapel that were not destroyed. Um, okay. The altar what didn't seem defiled, though it was you know mostly empty. Um, <sighs> well. I don't think Jezwala will risk going any further. Um, join the rest of the group. All right. You are all inside this room here in a tiny hut, it sounds like. How long are you guys going to try to rest for? I'd like an hour. An hour. A uh, proper short rest. Yes, the hut takes an hour to cast. Uh, half an hour. Ten minutes. Get it what? right. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> We'd be here forever. It takes an hour, half an hour. Ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> it takes ten minutes to cast as a ritual. So once that's cast, <clears throat> I will sure. rest. You are comfortable down. within your um, within your hut. In this time, can I identify? You do the hear rings, about um. You, you you may be able to about 30 minutes into your rest or so um, you hear a door open and you hear soft footsteps um, well actually they're booted um, not metal booted but they're not soft footsteps necessarily but you hear footsteps coming in your direction The clank of armor, kind of a clinging chainmail sound approaching. Rounding the corner and coming in the door is a figure looking Yeesh. like this. Okay. Do any of us from the courtyard recognize him, DM? No. The one, the man you saw did not look undead to you. It was a man with long silver hair that mm -hmm. you saw through the window. And he will look at the opaque hut and kind of walk in, stand about ten feet from it and just stare forward. And he says, Why do you living disturb the dead? And he's just kind of staring at this. Should we say anything? It's really uh, Alimus, can we be heard from within? Um, let me just double check. He can't see us, right? Uh, he can't see us, no. Da -da -da, Ryan's... 
Well, when the dead disturb the living, you cannot expect the living not to disturb them back. Good point. Fair yeah. point, fair point. Doesn't say we can't be heard or anything, so... DM? Yeah? It, just clarification then, since the spell doesn't say, can we be heard? Yes. Um, yes, you would assume that you could. Okay, thank you. That sound would pass through. And if did is that what you answered him? The Yes uh, it is. Okay. And how did the noble Vladimir Horngard disturb you? And he kind of walks in a circle around the hut towards the fallen bones. Um uh have you taken the armor? Yeah, I assume that everything's in this hut for uh Linus okay. to identify, right? Indeed. Hmm? Well, if you, you look will... on the floor, you will see a great deal of the blood that he spilled when he attacked. Yeah, he almost killed me twice. We came here to converse. It seems he disagreed with our intentions and attacked first. We merely defended ourselves. And what are your intentions? You see him beginning to gather up the bones, the parts of the remaining body of uh, of Vladimir, seeming to do so very gently, bringing them, placing them back upon the throne. What's he doing? I will step out of the bubble. Okay. Jezwala will I've... sneak out of the bubble in the behind, like, keeping the bubble between him and just uh, this character. Okay. Here, make a stealth check. I Cyber will say... attempt to stand up and get dizzy and fall down again. Yeah, Maris okay. goes over to Cyborg and assists him in standing. Still a little woozy. <laughs> then she casts Cure Wounds. Oh, God. She loves Cyborg. Adorable. He almost died. He did almost die. <laughs> Someone who actually died? <laughs> I know what you're going through. <laughs> uh, he he actually does... Die. <laughs> Uh, Claire, as you exit the bubble, he mm -hmm. seems to just be placing these bones, arranging them in sort of a neat pile upon the throne. I was called Ooh. here. And it's 20 slams. points back, Cyborg. It's land. Called it's... by whom? A silver-haired man. I pull out the scale. Left this behind. My friend saw him in her dreams, and he appeared to me at the Amber Temple. And it seems, judging by what we witnessed downstairs, that there's something missing. A beacon of sorts that needs to be retrieved. A beard. Why to you? Why not to Vladimir? Vladimir's hatred consumed him. He didn't want to see healing in this land. He wanted to see eternal suffering for Strahd. Eternal suffering for Strahd is eternal suffering for everyone else. He was a noble warrior. I believe that. He was a kind man. And you can see him gently kiss the forehead of the skull and place it atop the bones that he has assembled. 
in life, I'm sure he was. I say from within. I was sorry to have dispatched your friend. I didn't want to fight him. His righteous anger had been corrupted, as has mine. But he continues to stare at the scale in your hand. What did he tell you? The silver-haired man? What did Lord Arshinvost say? <clears throat> um, that his skull was in the castle of his enemy and that it was to be returned. He was the beacon, you see. You should do it. You should go. And you should go quickly. It's my intention. And you see his eyes begin to pulse a bit more um, intensely as he looks at you and then his ears, or his eye, uh, his face directs to the door and you can hear the sound of multiple more footsteps coming forth. Expecting company? My brothers. And four more revenants clad in the armor of the Order of the Silver Dragon enter the room. And, but you see this one hold up a hand then. Give me the scale. For what purpose? Do not test my patience. I'll return it. Okay. He snatches it out of your hand. And still holding up a hand, he lays it down um, on top of the skull on the throne. My brothers, our Lord Commander says to watch the parapets. Evil flies this night, and we must be vigilant. Go! And the revenants <laughs> clash gauntleted fists to their armor and turn and leave the room. You should not tarry here. Only long enough to heal some wounds and we'll be out of your hair. And heal quickly. And he places his hand on the throne and looks back and says, Rest, my love, while you can. And then he is also exits the room. Go back inside the hut. What, what did he did he say? Did, did he mention the, uh, the 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 creature or the man that we saw in the window? Are we in trouble? Um, I saw the him. guys. 
That was him. By the way, Cyborg, he put the bones on the, um, on the throne, so. I'm... Don't. Just I, want those bones. Don't touch he, those bones. You know, it's a sensitive subject, just want them. Cool. Oh, really? Okay, let's not get up each other's asses about our various insecurities, okay? We're tired. Who wants some we wine? Need to fucking no. rest. <laughs> Okay. I have one. I have. I have wine. Anyone want to hit up the ewer? <laughs> no. It's it you never ends. It's always refilling. <laughs> really like uh, that. Cyber, do you still like wine? Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I haven't had. Well, let's well, go. Let's just go. And she takes Cyber into the hut. <laughs> it looks looks back at both just Waldo and Merritt <laughs> and Claire like. What? 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 You'll be fine. I look to a canther and say, no. <laughs> okay. And I will you, try to, I will identify the ring if it's magical. Um, yep, you now have time to do this. Um, as Takes ten minutes. the other um, revenant seems to have called off the remaining knights. For now, at least. Um, this is a ring of free action. Ring of free that was upon Ooh. his finger. I wow. like that name. Ring free of fraction. Action. <laughs> free action. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Come yeah. On. I mean, uh, what is it? What is it? It, it, it prevents things like uh, grappling. Um, you you cannot have your um, movement speed reduced by magic. Oh, man. You cannot, and neither can you be paralyzed or restrained by magic. And, uh, Difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement. So I think Holy it's crap. either just Waldo or now. myself. Yeah. Well, you've got wings. That so that would have oh, really yeah. helped yeah. in the battle with the uh, Amber Golem. Yeah. It would have really helped in the uh, last fight where you were, you know, paralyzed. So that was what I was talking about. I look oh, up yeah, to just Waldo and I say, "Does this fit your fingers?" <laughs> yes. Try on. Do like the, the fountain thing. And then, put it on a finger. Ah. Feels very freeing. I don't get it. Sarcasm. And uh, he will go on. Is there any other items that need? Uh... It was a sword. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's very useful. I appreciate it very much. It was only the sword that was magical as well, wasn't it? Oh, I thought the armor was as well. Was the was armor? Was I mistaken about that? I don't think the, the armor, armor was... is not. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, it was just a sword. But it is a half plate, Liz. That mean that brings your armor class to 15 plus your dex mod. If you put it on, which yeah, I think should yeah. help you a lot. Yep. Moving from leather, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I won't get crushed and killed by a friggin' giant this time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Boy. Welcome yeah, to the let's... Clank Club. One yeah. never knows. Yeah. I'm ready. Uh, just a quick one. Welcome so to the Raiders. Um, thank you very much. Hello. Zane. Hey. hey. Welcome, Hello. guys. Uh, I am going to do arcane recovery while I rest. Okay. Okay. And then, do we do we get a read on the sword? A sword. Was it? It's plus plus. One. It's a plus two great sword. A plus two, two great sword. Yeah. Love it. Ow. I know. Ow. It hurts. But there's literally no one who can use it, right? Nope. Oh well. It is an iconic weapon for him. Um, we should hold on to it in case somebody dies and we need to roll up an extra character. <laughs> oh my god. Pessimistic. Strahd. Strahd. So. Strahd. You're, you are able to complete your short rest, though you feel the darkness sort of looming more intensely as you guys stay here. Um, the revenant that was in here warned, did warn you that um, your that uh, you know your time of being able to be allowed here was waning. Yeah. So. Yes. So use hit dice if you need to short rest and heal up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
time you um, need three, time you need to use one. I will take the hour that we are here to attune to the ring, DM. Mm hmm. You may do so. Thank you. Um, knowing that the um, uh, revenants are gone, I will um, give you a sort of free look at the other rooms here. Um, Sir Godfrey will sit almost despondently here should you choose to look, um, he will explain that there is a um, a rooftop and a tower upon which the beacon used to shine. Um, and in this particular room above the mantle, there is um, an uh, sort of shield-shaped indentation on the wall it looks like either a fine coat of arms or in fact a fine shield used to hang here but it does it hangs there no longer which room was this that would be here okay well does anyone see any reason why we should not make our way back to Barovia? Didn't we come here for an ally? I mean, how's he helping us? Wasn't didn't wasn't the the ally the beacon? Didn't we kill him? No. No. The. I think that this was the ally I was looking for, but uh, the cards may have, well, been vague. An, an enemy of Strahd is what I s was hoping to find here, and that I did. Well, maybe I apologize, we it was not what exactly what we were looking for, but perhaps there is some greater good that could be done. But we have the, the riddle to solve, and that leads us to the... with the, the, the head returned to the body, and... and... Yeah. I mean, I... I don't Here's know what effect thought. it'll have, but Arjunvost was an enemy of Strahd for returning and making his body whole again, may do something for the land, then it's worth the time. So, uh, Elimus and Neris, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about magic. What all do you need to have in order to cast a resurrection spell. Call it to Merce. Frankly, Maris does not know off the top of her head and would have to reference something else. Because I cannot see how a skull of a silver dragon could help us. However, a silver dragon, especially one that had a reason to have a beef with Strahd, now that would be something and as we know there is a way for any one of you to acquire the power of resurrection yeah. it might work on a skull but we don't have the skull but if it's in the castle where we are going Isn't the power of resurrection? Isn't that what made the lich? I mean, we don't want to make a. Oh, it made me no, the man I am today. But it, it did that in exchange for a silver dragon on our side. Just a thought. But just would it thought. be a problem if it just resurrected the skull? Ah, that would of course a be a problem. It? But um, perhaps it works differently. It's a high price for a perhaps. I'm loath to make further use of these gifts. I think we've tampered with that enough. 
you did in the Tumblr. Collectively. You made a perfectly good example. After all, perfectly you were the one who volunteered good, to go first. Uh, well, what are we waiting for? Let's go have dinner. Let's. Dinner? Oh, we have a dinner invitation from Strahd. Did you miss There's that? There's a bunch of bullets. Sorry, never mind. Uh, even I know the joke is getting old. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose we shall depart then, since it seems we are no longer welcome here. Is that a consensus from everyone? Mm -hmm. Could totally resurrect that. I mean, come on. <laughs> How is that not a perfect win? But I don't think anybody wants to touch the, the amber thingies anymore. Plus, it's going back on our tracks. So we head back out? We remember, in this that the, remember this thought at some point in the future. Did we check this room? No. Oops. And it's too late. Ah, <laughs> too late. Uh, this one, it's it's up to you. I kind of revealed what's here. If you guys want to um, sort of rustle around in them, you can. Then I just changed but you do know me. that um, this one is here. Oh, uh, this is just sort of Everything's below blurry. the chapel. Oh, I, that's my given fault. That, given that Godfrey was pretty civil. And is everyone else left. on the ground floor, yeah? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like we are departing. We are. Indeed. Where are we going? Wow. We're off on the road to Ravenloft. What Cyborg said. Don't we need to uh, recover? Grey Elven friend. Yes. We need to, at the very least, check in on him. Mm. It's not clear to me that he actually wants to go face to face, head to head with Strahd himself. Might be a bit out of his depth, but it might be worth it be seeing whether his resurrection was as fruitful as yours. Perhaps he is interested in resurrecting a dragon. He's already taken the gift. Has he used it? He will do when he finds his uh, sister, I guess. Hmm. Sounds like we're making our way east towards the uh, uh, elf circle camp houses thing. Okay. You wind your way up through the woods away from Arjun Vastholt. The sort of cold, depressive stone gives way to just a more, a softer darkness. One of mist, of uncertainty. You come to the fork, familiar fork in the road, you know, turning right here would lead you to Valaki and the camp not far away from it. You are not harassed on the road. And in fact, as you continue this way, the mist seems to part from you. A few more, maybe a few hundred feet further in front of you than you're used to. It's been kind of this, you know, odd sensation of just kind of skirting forward. And does the path even continue? Are we even in, you know, is the rest of the world really even still there, the way the mists kind of close in on the edges of the forest. But this time it rolls back in a way, uh, it, or in a way that um, makes you think that your path of travel is expected and welcomed. Oh, that's wonderful. Is it? Maybe because we are going where the mist wants us to go. The thought had occurred to me. Hmm. 
So, you were attacked by a door? <laughs> right. I said I would tell you about that. Um, so, uh, when we first arrived, this was myself, Maris, Alimus, Jeswaldo. There were a couple others with us at the time who have since, um, departed. Um, like we made our way no no not no not, no, not no, like no, no no like well well okay well clear i mean it's like yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah uh we're not exactly sure what happened to one of them um but, but they looked okay. great they looked so good yeah um we ended up exploring a house in a village there were these two kids outside who were talking about how uh, there was a monster in their basement and there's some issue with their parents. We went inside, got trapped inside. Um, and uh, at some point when we were exploring the basement of the house, which has had this long winding, um, not catacombs, but uh, more to the basement than you would expect for a normal house. There was some cult activity um, that seemed to have been present at one point um, oh. working out of the basement and um, sex stuff just Waldo wink <laughs> don't listen to them um, but there was a door that I uh, me being at the head of the party at the end of a hallway um, reached out to open um, and it um, well, rather than doing what a door normally does and just being a goddamn door, it fucking bit me. And it um, took her in a warm embrace. The whole door? Like it just Yeah, yeah the whole door. I'm so glad you're okay, but I mean in retrospect it was pretty much a sight to behold, so. In retrospect it was kind of funny. Oh, right, we can there laugh other, about it now. There, it's there fine. There are other things here that have happened that I don't really want to laugh about, but that one I can laugh about. But but like a door is only like that, that thick. How it was a creature. Of, you know, there there are creatures that like become other things and eat unsuspecting a mimic people like me. Oh, can... I've clearly demonstrated that I'm not the most observant person in the room, which is why I now sort of defer to other people. Yeah, yeah, that's that's real. Yeah, yeah that's true. I know my weaknesses. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, we finally now know the answer to the famous riddle. When is a door not a door? When it's a fucking mimic? When it's, when a, it's mimic. a mimic. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. I feel so enlightened. Good thing we're not mimics. Nope. Oh. Your hmm? mic Good went thing. really weird there, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she is a mimic. <laughs> Shit. Her mic's uh, a mimic. That's the proof we needed. <gasps> Burn the witch! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no! I did run into someone once who um, encountered a similar creature in a room full of barrels um, like large like alcohol casks and um, seemed to for a long time afterward have a um, a perpetual fear of barrels they sort of like flipped a fuck every time they walked into a room with one I'm thankfully not having the same reaction to doors since those seem to be rather prevalent in yeah yeah, you know, be hard to buildings, get a handle on. civilization. Be hard so. to get a handle on. Simon. Yeah, yeah, I ignored that. <laughs> oh, Maris can't take a sip of wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are approaching the village uh, now, too. Um, and much like is behind here, you hear some horses crying. You see a few glowing lights in the hillsides. You hear a soft, sad tune being played by a lone harp off somewhere. I suppose we make our way towards Casimir's home? Okay. Yeah. You go there and are greeted by, well, first through the door, the form of guess who? Yes. Your sister? You guys have been gone for so long! 
Hi, Victor. Yes, Maris or... nudges Claire as she walks by her. <laughs> Shoots a wink over her shoulder. You. God damn it. Are you okay? Are you... Are you what? hurt? Do you need my help? Well, we're a little banged up, but uh, we're doing okay. Have you uh, been taking care of yourself? Yeah. Um, Casimir won't let me complete my teleportation circle, though. Casimir is a very intelligent man. I think it's worth I mean, heeding his warnings. Kind of. <laughs> I'd put it more along the lines of Elimus myself, but, you know, he's <laughs> all right. Still, we want to respect the opinions of those that we're with. Oh, um, Victor. Who is the? Uh, and he kind of yes. looks towards. <laughs> what? What is that thing? What? This is Cyvor, and this is Akantha. There are any friends? Cyvor, Akantha. This is Victor. Did you just call me a friend? boyfriend? No. He is a friend. Eris oh. peeks out around the makes eye contact with Akantha. I. Uh, oh, oh! I didn't. Oh it's, man! It's <laughs> nice to meet. Um, you. Oh, up that! Throw up that picture. Yep. This. Throw it is... up! Throw it up! <laughs> uh, where's my handout oh, for God. Victor? Oh my Bella God, he's it. so cute. I, hey, baby. I didn't know that. Um, Claire, this is. I, um, oh it's nice my to meet. God. So uh, while while this is happening, Jeswaldo sort of leans into Elimus and says. If he comes with us, I bet, I bet 100 gold that he dies first. Can only hope. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just saw the token. So handsome. The, the, the mutton so chops straight out of Carol. That's Yeah, he like, is. what a babe. <sighs> he is probably in his mid, uh, early 30s. But he's very, very slim. He's skinny. His face is gaunt, and he does have this sort of, um, well, blue you know, skin. unfortunate, unfortunate set of mismatched facial features. He has, um, you know, a, um, a boil on his cheek, and he has kind of this like greasy-ish hair, and kind of comes down in a. Um, facial hair that just looks like he just never cut it ever so it's just kind of grown out however but um not dignified and full enough to be called a beard more just patches Rough. of facial hair kind of he was yeah. kind of like a hipster before hipsters were cool something yeah. like that yeah. the first uh, hipster. dropped at birth that sort of thing <laughs> like, it's like crabgrass had a personality but he looks like oh. incredible <laughs> oh my god are you I... some oh sorry are you some sort of Fiend, to get those wings that you have, gesturing no. towards Cyborg's bony wings. No, no, I just, uh, I just made some uh, unfortunate life choices. Um, kind of like your facial hair. Um, that made you a fiend. What? No, oh, I. Shit, there was Cyborg. a. Uh, we went to the Amber Temple, and there were. Uh, I have. A, uh, no, I'm not a fiend. I'm not a. I'm not a fiend. Asmodra, I am not a fiend. I just, I'm looking back and forth between everyone, like Maris, Cyber, Victor, Akantha, Esmeralda, like I, I, I need to, uh, I'll be back and I walk out. <laughs> Cyber shoots a look to Maris like, you need someone to, I'm okay. You know what, I'm you know, okay. Victor, like, why don't we just chat for a second? Okay. <laughs> Okay. How things been? Like you can't get your your circle together. I thought I overheard that something about teleportation. Like how's I... it going? It's good. Um, I kind of miss my parents and our house. Um, my room. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't uh, know. Yeah, I, I. Am I, am I going to be stuck here? You know what? Uh, Victor. 
the world is your oyster. And, you know, I mean, after this all is like taken care of, because we're totally working on it, like you could just teleport yourself anywhere. And so like, no, like maybe you could even teleport yourself back to a time when your parents were still alive. You know what I mean? Like maybe you wouldn't have to like just be here without your parents forever. That is fucking This one right? audibly you know I mean? laughs just <laughs> and leaves the room just laughing hysterically at Maris is like, uh, do you drink? Would you like some wine? Have you tried drinking? Oh, sure. Maris pours him some wine. It's really gonna be okay though, like My I parents what probably mean. deserve to die though, right? They I mean I mm, uh well I like barely knew them, but it just didn't seem like a great relationship. But like who am I to judge? I mean the thing is like I never I don't remember my parents. All I know is that they died, and then I don't remember what happened to them or anybody else that I grew up with. So, I mean, and I turned, out, later, I turned out fine. Like, so you're going to be fine. And you've got this magic thing going for you. Like, you're, you're your own man. You know what I mean? And, like, Claire is, like, so into it. So. Yeah. You fucking <laughs> traitor. <laughs> yes. I thank you, Maris. You're right. Our parents did deserve to die, and we're stronger than them, so we won't. Yeah, sure. You're like right. if that's what you took from that, absolutely. Like if that helps you on your journey, like go for it. The strong we have this survive. chalk. The strong do survive, and you're gonna survive. But just promise you do like nice things and don't kill more cats, okay? Like just just like they. I brought them back, kind of. Tell me that. I know you did it. <laughs> And he you, he actually looks over his shoulder and you see another little skeletal cat kind of prowling up on a hillside. <sighs> Victor. <laughs> I didn't have time to finish the circle again. He found it and he... Okay, well, yeah, you can't be faulted for that, but maybe Cyborg just, like, keep a closer lockdown. Cyborg immediately covers Acantha's eyes and ears so she doesn't see the cat. It's like... Again, this is the poor child that we're trying to protect from swear words. <laughs> um, um, where's, where's Cosimir? I want to say hi to him. Um, oh, he will be inside his hut, um, pouring over some books, brewing uh, what seems to be a kettle of tea. Let's go there. We're going to go there. We're, we're going to go see the man who's not doing horrible things to cats. What's he doing? What's he doing to the cats? As Cyborg mm. leads her away. <laughs> what, what's he doing? He's not gonna, a very good friend. I'm gonna follow those two precious children. <laughs> I've gone to the other side of the hill. Amaris feels really bad for Victor, so she's gonna like hang out with him. Just Waldo finds a knot in a tree to just throw daggers at. Okay. Those of you going in with Casimir Velikov, mm -hmm. he will. So have you returned? Are you ready? Seems so. What time of day is it, DM? Hi! Are your hands um, better? Are they not burned anymore? It is certainly evening by now. This would be a good time, even though you just short rested, to actually refresh and take a long rest. I say the morning, shall we? You're welcome to rest here. Thank you. I'll go so, sit right next to him. Your sister. Do we have to find her body first before she's resurrected? We do. Do you know where she is? I imagine somewhere far beneath the castle. Hopefully. Do we know any layout of the castle? Is there a way in lower? Any secret entrances? Mm. I know we have an well, invite, we could. but I'd rather go there indiscreetly. Well, well, if you want to take a look at my map, we could. Your map? Oh, points. yes, of course. Hmm. Yes. And there could be port. Um, <clears throat> Please spread it out on the table. Yeah, it's really, it's 
really hard to fold these things. Hang on. There appears to be a lower chapel area below. There is a large balcony off the back. There is, of course, the front drawbridge. Though, unless you can fly or free scale 2,000 feet of sheer rock, I think the drawbridge is our only option. I can carry me and one other with the fly spell. And, and I can Interesting. carry... I can't carry just Waldo, but I could try somebody else. You can carry a Kentha. Oh, easily, yeah, yeah. I could also bring one in addition to myself. I'll go. So that's not enough. We're all going. <laughs> I want to fly, though. <laughs> How many are unaccounted for in the flying? Is it one or two? Two. Well, hmm. Hmm. Well, if I, I could fly a Cantha and then I could come back and try to get somebody else. That's too risky. And I casting that spell. Into a bird. That still doesn't. You still can't carry Meris with half plate. No. Well, you can't what carry about, the elf. Uh, what about, what about Athelflaed? She's. You struggled with Gisraldo. Oh. I mean, I don't wear plates, so you could carry me, but I'd still wander? leave. Yeah. And what if you drop I mean, her 2,000 feet? Yeah. Well, I'll I would... be able to catch her. I, I've got 2,000 feet to do it. But Maybe. what if you don't is the question. And who believes in you just like really asking for a friend? Oh, we all believe in you, but it would leave, it would fall down to me to save her. You know, I could I could catch her. I've I've got my uh, uh, I've got the well, I've, I could catch her. I could do it. How long does it take to cast a scroll? Can you can you craft scrolls? I can't. Can you do that? Mm, it I, takes fifth, uh, can, fifth edition. You can craft scrolls. Can you? I don't know. You can. You can. Yeah. If you have the materials, you can um, spend some time, but it takes, uh, I think, a number of days, days per, depending on the yeah. level of the spell. Yeah. I mean, we I don't seem to be in any rush to get to this dinner. Is, is there a, a expiration on it? Simon, we're not going for the dinner. Oh. Where are we going then? We're going there to Kilstrad. Oh, so it's like dinner. Got it. Yeah, oh. buddy. There it is. Welcome okay. to the party. I would rather go Maris there gives on the quiet. Sivar a pat on his shoulder. Do you intend to finish the deed then while you are there? It's not our only option. How else will we get out of this place? My only intent is to find my sister and get her out of the castle. We've given you our word to help you do that. So going down into the catacombs or wherever she is first would be our priority. Unless you wish to do it alone. One way or another, I will accomplish it. But I would appreciate your help. Just know that I intend to leave once I resurrect her. I respect that. I don't so, think we're powerful enough to take on Strahd yet. Well, but we've got the, the Sun Sword and the, the Book of Raven and. and and the other thingy. Saival, what did we fight less than a few hours ago? Um, there's a revenant 
and I believe also like a lesser form of ghosts, giant spiders. There's a dragon made of ash. We didn't fight that one though. How There's did that go for of... you? And those dead are the ones at Fort Strahd. How did it go for them? Can you Great. imagine how powerful he is? We nearly lost you and Claire. We've already lost Maris once. We nearly lost Jeswaldo as well. Oh, we, we can't not do something like exactly. Well, well, let's move away from that. Look at the more immediate. We still have two people who cannot, who we can't get to the castle. If we take the 2,000 foot drop, yes. Yeah. I mean, um... The problem with that as well the... is that it takes up a lot of resources. I'm not there, but I just want to remind everybody that using fly to overcome obstacles here in Barovia has not worked out well for us. Yeah, it's been it's been really nice. Well, I mean, we no, we're able. Right. Like, I'm also not here, and I second that. <laughs> we we reconnaissance the tower, and and nobody died. Um. Well, I almost got electrocuted. When you and I Check this map, Sival. Check the map. See if there's any possible entrance yeah, below. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If there's course. any secret entrances below, that's what we should take. Something that's not expected. Right. Well, I could I could turn into a bird, but I could also turn Maris into something because I have polymorph. So I could turn her into a bird too. Or that's a lot. We'd love a lot to of become spells. a bird. That's a lot of spells just to get in. Yeah. Plus. Polymorph might be helpful if we need to sneak in, depending on what the situation is. She could maybe get through a small space. But I don't think that should be our first, our go-to. Polymorph is a dangerous spell. You polymorph someone into something without the intelligence to know what it is, and you near enough lost that person for the hour that it's cast. Be careful with that. I've never, I've never used it before, so I don't know what happens. Okay, never mind. My understanding is that the creature would still recognize its friends. It would, but it has the intelligence of the creature. So Certainly. depending on the birds fly in flocks, though. So it would probably. Or I could turn it into a lizard and tie it to my foot. We're not going to turn it into a lizard and tie it to your foot. Thank you, though. Think of something else. That would be traumatic for the lizard. And all of us. I thought it was a very charming idea. <laughs> it was. Again, resources. We are all limited. Well, what about um, allies? Or uh, we have the professor here and, and also Esmeralda. I mean, those are two people who definitely want to see Strahd go down. What about the, the people in the village? or um... The people here have been scared for centuries. Rightfully so. No one's going to stand up but the people that are trapped here. This is a game to Strahd. How many people before us do you think have tried this? The possibility of this up us succeeding is so low. How many adventurers so, or people that have been pulled through the mist before us? Hundreds, thousands maybe. We're just pawns in Strahd's game. So the option is, is what? Just fight. Buy real estate in Barovia? Or hide. Become a brainless zombie like half this population. But, but then I never see my grandma again. That's why we fight. 
Okay, so we fight. We fight. How do we do that? That's what we're trying to figure out. With our resources. We have to be careful. Our strengths. I don't and feel like we're ready to take on Strahd. We're not. So who can help us? My sister was a powerful, powerful mage. And you want to see her resurrected? I will see her resurrected. Okay, but so where is she? In the catacombs. Of That's Ravenloft. what we've been speaking of. She lies beneath the castle. Oh. But would she... You've said that you're going to depart as soon as she's resurrected. Would she... And you're welcome to come with us. That might be an option. Come back another day. Learn what we have learned. The castle is massive. Also. To search its entirety in an evening would be folly. But there, ha there must be people who go into the castle or... or I mean, Stratus doesn't live there by himself, right? No. He probably lives there so with thousands of other undead. No other servants enter or leave the castle? Who knows? You guys have met one servant. Nobody ever yeah. goes in. And, and the, nobody, nobody ever comes out. out. Yeah, we've met uh, one. The Seneschal guy at the yeah. Amber Temple who is like, get your butts to dinner. Uh, so rude. Uh, yeah, we did meet one. I say we go there with the idea of not being known that we're there. If that's possible. Who knows? Cyborg, do you see anything on your map that would give us any other way in? I mean... um, You guys can make an investigation check with advantage to sort of re-go over that map and... Who look. wants to roll it? I've got plus eight. I've got four. Well, can we all roll with advantage, have... or...? I don't, have, I don't have proficiency in investigation, so I'm not sure I'll be able to. Neither help. do I. I have plus mm. two. I don't know why. I you guys do it. can just do it, Alimas. Yeah. Uh, but you are helping very much as Alimas kind of deduces yeah. what you guys yeah. are looking for. Nicely through. done. Twenty-five. Um, yeah. There is the obvious entrance, which is the front. The there are. Um, Sort of off the back, off the back of the castle and down, there is a what seems to be a small chamber um, with three large windows, like a small chamber that seems like it would enter some type of place beneath the castle. It looks like a chapel beneath um, the uh, main levels. There are also there's a um, door to the back which looks like perhaps a servant's entrance or something. There is also, uh, there are also a sort of ov ovular room on the back of the castle with stained glass windows on the main level that appears to be a chapel. Um, then, of course, there are the turrets. Um, you can see that there are small hatches in the top where any guard would um, ascend through. The main spire is you think probably close to 400 feet tall. Um, the lesser, wider tower next to it, uh, about perhaps half that. There's a causeway that connects the two as well. Okay. So maybe the servants area down below, chapel. I like that. Either the the chapel room, the chapel space, or the servant's entrance. My one concern is, since we know that he does occasionally send servants out, that we would be discovered at the servant's entrance. The servant that we discovered is more like his right hand man. I don't think he would come out of that entrance. But I understand what you mean. I look to um, Casimir 
What other servants does he have? Do you know? Does he have... I have heard of the one of which you speak. Well, you saw the Seneschal. Him. I also know that many in this camp used to serve him. The ones that left. Though, how often they come and go from the palace was not my concern. Oh, but still, if they served him... So there's a lot of living have, there. I mean, a castle doesn't change. They might Ex know. Pardon me, I don't understand your meaning. Well, uh, it, it takes a lot to alter a castle itself, and unless Strahd has the ability to sort of shift the stones, like if they had access to the castle, the entrances and ex exits would remain the same. So they may have uh, knowledge of the interior that we don't have. Are you asking Strahd's servants to betray him? No, that's well, not going to work. Well, no, but if they left, like it clearly, I mean, right? They they didn't want to be in his service anymore. They can that's come and not what I meant. They are still in his service. Oh, I see. So he's no one really. There has been talk of bringing tribute to him in the past. Indeed, it was at one point commonplace. So my point to answer is, your question, coming and going is not unheard of. For the living, that is. I'm guessing there's plenty of undead there. I can only imagine. But there's got to be living there as well. Very well. I see we go under the go there as stealthily as we can. If it's the chapel entrance, let's see what we can do. We need the closest well. way to get into the catacombs, correct? If we can get in there unmolested, we should be okay. I would think that catacombs would have some sort of connecting into the chapel. I agree. I think, so, I think chapel is our first option with a maybe servants as a backup in case something happens. Is there any sewer entrances into that place? Sewer? Hmm. Grates on the out of bounds. <laughs> it's not my ideal place to travel, but how does Strahd get uh, water? Or does he try <laughs> to avoid it? He doesn't drink. I imagine when the castle was constructed, everything that was needed was brought. Was the castle constructed once he was a vampire, or before? Well, before. So it's my understanding. He would have a well then. Mm hmm. Likely. Yes, it was constructed in honor of his mother, Queen Ravonia, from my understanding. Can we see the well on the map? I probably have a few, I'm assuming, but it's that big. Um, you guys made a most excellent check when investigating the plans. Um... We'll check what I have on here. Well, well, well. Exactly. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Well, well, well. No. Okay. There is not one that you see. Um, this thing was constructed as really a fortification. It's obviously likely to be lavish inside but it is more a um it's more, almost more a monument than a practical okay. um practical thing um the fact that it is also on this tall pillar stone would probably actually make a well impossible they would have to draw probably, water from outside probably have yeah. like an aqueduct of some sort that would bring it in for the it would, yeah. it would have to yeah Though okay. that is also not something that you can see from the map that you've made, or no. you've 
you've traveled, you can see the castle, you know, from yeah. a distance. It looms over Barovia. It sits on top of that. There's nothing connecting it except the drawbridge um, as far as foot travel is concerned. Okay. Just what though comes back in. So, all taken care of? Maybe. Unless oh, you maybe it's enough. Thoughts. No, I never have any other thoughts. I think we should uh, depart in the morning. Where's Claire? Uh, she knew too much. No, oh, you took care of her. Good, good. Just Walter. <laughs> I can go and... Died. Esmeralda offers to go and um, find her. Okay. I'll look to Maris and say, remember, you have a book to read. Is it oh, dream? yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be the one, though. That's the one I need to be reading. Are you attempting to? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mar Maris, have a thought about how many hours you're going to spend doing that. Well, Maris definitely. So we're taking a long rest. Yeah. Um, if you want to consider that a bit, we go do this. Scene yeah, with, that'd um... be great. Let's yeah. let me. I'll consider it. Okay. So, Claire, are you attempting to hide through all of this at all? Or are you just... No, I've just off? walked to the other side of the hill, sort of across from Casimir's. I've, um... I'm just kind of lying back against the hill. If I had... Okay. <laughs> I was... I thought to myself originally, like, I would have, like, if I was still wielding, like, a proper sword, I would have, like, plunged it into the ground and it just, like, sat down. But, I like, the sun sword doesn't really do that, so... No. To that How idea. unsatisfying. <laughs> That's why you brought the great sword. Yes, and when you yeah. I the... plunge the great sword into the ground and I lean up against it. <laughs> when you get, uh, and the first time the thought crosses your mind of doing that, you sense this like agitated disapproval um, emanating from the sun sword itself. <laughs> oh. yeah, it expresses its displeasure. Heft the uh, handle a little bit like, hmm. <laughs> guess you've got an attitude problem too, huh? Are you talking to your sword? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, apparently. Um, it doesn't talk back, but I have the distinct impression that it's aware of me in some way. I've heard magical items can be of such. You mean it is somehow possessed of some kind of life? life adjacent um, will of its maker or will of its owner imbued in it um, I imagine that whoever once owned this was probably rather powerful and the sword may have I don't know taken on some of its personality have you listened to it? A little. It's impatient. Um, I think that's why Jeswaldo was a little less keen on it. It wants. It wanted to leave the temple. It wants to accomplish something, and it. I mean, <laughs> given. It's. It's good against undead. It would be good against Strahd. I, you know, get the sense that it wants to have a little bit of a, have a bit of a run at him. As would I. Yes, well. How are you holding up? Ah. Honestly, not great. Um... I I'm worried about too many things. I'm I'm worried about Cyvor, you know, just being way too pure for this world. Um and Akantha just wanting to make friends with everything and most of which in this place would probably try to eat her. I'm 
worried about Jeswaldo. He, he's been through a lot. And it's clearly taking a hold on him. And I'm confused and I don't I mean, I know what I have to do here, but I don't know how we're going to do it, and... <sighs> it's a lot. Too much. It is, but... Well... When it comes to times like this, you think you're... There's something wise to say, something your mentor would have taught you, or something like that, but... Right now, I just feel... Well... Lost. Mm. But... We can't keep going forward. Seems they have a plan. Mm. Some kind of one. Oh, gosh. They're strategizing without me. <laughs> They're strategizing. <laughs> um, golly. I, um, they, what Maris said about Victor, that wasn't true, by the way. That uh, is, that. Um, I, uh, I'm smarter than that, I promise you. Okay, good. <laughs> um, they keep but I'm sure there's some, it. uh, I'd love to hear the story from your side sometime. Ah. Uh. For now, though, I think, um, I think it is time for us to get a bit of rest. It sounds like we are, we have an invitation to accept tomorrow. Sounds like it. Could do for a rest. And I'll push myself off the ground, grab the sword, <laughs> resheath it, and follow Esmeralda back. Okay. Anyone else have anything they'd like to do in the Dusk Elf village before their long rest? Nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maris, Go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Sorry, uh, I read for two hours and then sleep for six because I need to regain hit points. Okay. Sorry, Alimus. No. Noted. It's How fine. many hours do you have left? Maris. So if I were to do the two hours of reading, correct? Yeah. Yeah. How long is our rest? Is it eight hours? Uh, yeah, eight hours will get you the uh, full long rest. Um, you can do ten, though. It sounds like your companions want to leave probably in the morning, but um, just, uh, just let me know. Just mark off how many hours you spend reading. Though, okay. like I said, if you <clears throat> do more than two, we'll probably have to make a roll to um, uh, combat your exhaustion. Cool. I, I'll just do two. <laughs> I asked Maris to cast Into the Ring again. Yes. For We should think about putting Revivify into that, by the way. But we need diamonds. Have we got diamonds? I yes. don't think I... You... So, assuming you guys... Did you guys pl plunder any of the treasure room in the Amber Temple? My yeah, understanding was that thing. we did. Um, Just Waldo took diamonds. Yeah. He has them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah? Like, uh, Just Waldo, can I, I get all a diamond? The all the diamonds that have been found, Just Waldo has taken. I assume you guys have, you know... There yeah. have been two. Jeswaldo has them both. Okay. Do I asked the group as a do we want to cast that into this ring for safety and keep one? On I the would rest? feel comfortable doing that, but Jeswaldo's the one with the diamonds. You don't know that Jeswaldo has the diamonds. Oh. Ah, Jeswaldo. <laughs> I asked the group, do we have diamonds? <laughs> do Jeswaldo you have diamonds? is silent. <gasps> okay. Sneaky, sneaky Pete. Because if we did, we could use the revivify on someone and bring them back from the dead. 
So we have none of it in the treasury, no? Evidently okay. not. I swear we had. Well, there, were, there were definitely some in the in the treasure pile in the Amber Temple. Did nobody grab them? I thought we. Could I was a little them. preoccupied with the sword. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know what I was supposed it, I, to. I, I, what everybody else did, I, I was very careful. Whatever there were diamonds in the game, I took them. <laughs> so whatever they were mentioned in the game, I took them. I believe you. I'm just grumpy about it. <laughs> so I don't ever remember writing that down. I have it in my equipment. Has Peter been secretly telling you where all the diamonds are? <laughs> oh no. God. I don't think Peter would, <laughs> would say that. <laughs> Okay, so we can't do revivify. Um, so just, I suppose a uh, a healing word, if you can. All right. And then I will cast fourth level spell into it. Da, 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 da. What should I put into that? Um, when. When I've sort of been debriefed about what the plan is, uh, seems to be heading in the down below way, I will um, reiterate my intention to search for Arjun Vost's skull, which is likely to be in a place down below. All right. Okay, I cast a spell into the ring. And it is in there. Hmm. Sounds Before like we bed down for the night, I have one question for our elven friend. He turns towards you. You have said many times that you are set on resurrecting your sister. I had a sister once, I completely understand. But I'm curious if Strahd made you an offer, your sister's body, in exchange for betraying all of us. Would you do it? I only mention it because you have said several times that it is, you will do it at any cost. And, uh, well, any cost can be quite costly. Hmm. From what I've seen, betraying you would be a foolish move. But would you do it? Hmm. And he looks back to you, he says. I would not wish to. But were it the direst of circumstances, I would choose her over you. For now we are allied. But should the fight come to that, and I could choose her or death with you, I would absolutely choose her. Just as long as we all understand that. Good night, friends. <laughs> it's, um, you can see uh, Esmeralda carefully regarding Jeswaldo uh, through that exchange and as he leaves and looking at Casimir. She seems to let out a sigh and then leave to where she is going to make camp. Anyone else like to do anything? He's left the room at this point, right? It's up to you guys to leave. You're in his home, I believe. Oh, my bad. Okay, well, oh. I mean, I'll exit as well, but um, I... Where's Maris? I'm 
like Somewhere. next to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Um, Easily, I, easy to find her ear. So As we are sort of heading off, I'm pull you aside. Um, Jeswalda's not always been the nicest person, that, but that was a little pricklier than I've seen sometimes. I don't know. He's just been acerbic in the last 24 hours or so. I agree. Something is definitely not well. Right. We know what's wrong. But yeah. I'm concerned that there's more beneath the surface. I also worry about that. Are you feeling okay? Uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't mean really noticed anything different yet. All right. I mean, every everyone's had some sort of mishap when they touched those stones. I mean, mostly so far, I just feel like more, more confident in my decisions, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing. No, and from my understanding, that was the purpose of the gift. Um, and I, I'm happy for you to feel confident. I'm just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop, to be honest. Well, I mean... I'll let you know if I feel weird. Okay. And let's just keep a gentle eye on Jeswaldo. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I'd hate for him to go off the deep end. More. Yeah. Have fun with your book. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Ple pleasant reading? Uh, informative reading. Maris buries her head in her book. <laughs> <laughs> I give her a quick hug and head to bed. Um, as he leaves, you see um, whoever is last to leave as Casimir shuts the door, he will say, it's never going to be the right time. This is his realm. It will never point you there as if it's the right thing to do. Risk your life or don't. But I intend to take back what is mine. And he shuts the door. And that is where we'll take a little breaky break. Welcome back, everyone. After a Restful night. The party is awake at the Dusk Elven Village. It is morning light. And the sky seems just a bit brighter than most mornings. You are fooled for a moment that thinking the sun has come out. It has not, but the land looks maybe just a bit happier to you. Oddly enough, the day is yours to do. It's been lucky on fire, <laughs> just because it's been that no, kind of week. He's just building up our hopes. Okay, see. And then prepared to crush him again. Um, what do you guys do? Are you heading towards Ravenloft, or what is the plan? Yes. Sounds like the plan. I assume we feel clear right. in around the But camp. we're going to take a slight yeah. detour to a certain windmill. <gasps> a windmill? <laughs> um, Just Waldo, really. you've made me the happiest woman alive. No, I know. It's okay. <sighs> a Someday. question as well. Um, excuse me. Do... I forgot my question. All right. 
Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. If it was important, <laughs> it'll come back to you. Ooh, yeah, yeah, indeed. Or if you're me, okay. it'll never come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's and more it likely. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> All right, guys. What are you guys doing? Headed towards. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Oh, oh yep. Mm. Too busy looking at the um, meme that Liz's friend made. It's pretty quality. <laughs> I'll put it in the disc. It's great. Yeah, put it in Discord. So, Esmeralda will suggest to you guys during the planning that perhaps it's best if she would do something like using visibility or such, do some reconnaissance while you guys are inside the castle with Victor. Um, she would go in with you. This is also partially a DM thing and that I don't want to clog it down with too many NPCs. Victor very much wants to go in with you guys. Mm. But um, as we, there are lots of NPCs who will go to certain places with you. I would like to kind of pick and choose who will go in, but they will also be able to play a supporting role. Does that make sense? When I'm mm -hmm. kind of speaking DM to player, just uh, sure. just in an effort to keep things moving along and not have ten different um, actors sure. on one side in combat. So. Um, she will suggest that kind of thing, and that's kind of the reason that I am saying that. It will play a f factor, too. Okay. So. If she feels like she can do that without, you know, significant harm. She does. She then, scouted okay. the outskirts around the drawbridge in the castle previously. Right. I'll so. support that. So, making your way from the camp near Valaki. You hear the bell, the town bell ringing on the hour. Then it fades behind you as you continue on. A question, uh, real mm -hmm. quick, because we, passing through Velaki, did, how's the town looking? Are you going actually in and through or around? I, my assumption was going to be probably safer for us to kind of skirt the town, unless anyone has objections to that. Yes, That's what I assumed as well, lobster. but... Um, yeah, I don't think we needed to go in. Yeah. All right. Um, so, but just sort of generally, even if we are passing around the outside, like, is there sort of any indication of what the state of the town is? Um, it would make a... <laughs> Gesundheit. Perception check. Medicine check. Just kidding. I do suggest maybe we go in and try and buy some diamonds. If they're servants of straw, that might tip our hand. I will make that perception check, though. If I can find my perception skill, which is a whopping plus zero. Oh, it was so close to an 18. I rolled a four. The four? I mean, they seem to have repaired the palisades, the places where it seems like it, they had broken down in places. Um, it looks well fortified. You can see guards in front of the gates standing as usual. Uh, Do you, you see don't see any? any of the cloaked figures oh, that none? you saw before. None? Okay, interesting. All right. But you only see like a handful of guards, like three guards outside the gate. It's not some. Um, I'm not Miss Eagle Eyes over here. All right, well, going on. All right. All right, so you continue on past Falaki, and you wind your way near um, Lake Tsarovich, kind of go past the area where you saved young Arabelle. You, I don't know if you guys can see the map. So Again, about the journey, I was just say the journey feels really easy right now. Like the mists, again, part before you. The trees still do the spooky thing as they sort of shudder and undulate outside of your view. Um, things seem simultaneously eerily still and unmoving. And so when a single tree decides to shift and groan, it almost gives it a like lifelike appearance, but despite 
all of this, you feel safe walking the roads of Barovia. Safer than you have ever. Maybe the reason why it was so hard before was because we killed that damn crow. I mean, it's been a long time. Wasn't Cyborg the one who killed the crow, though? Or Raven? What was it? Sarif. Who's the... Yeah, not Cyborg. Sarif. Sorry, I... Wow. I he was. Really yeah, felt he, he was. He was, but I'm sure that they didn't like any of us. Mm. I don't know. I got along fine with the people at the inn. Well, maybe that's what it took. Perhaps. Hmm. And, and that's the windmill. <laughs> as like you guys windmill, let's go. wind through, you do in fact see standing on a hill an onion topped structure upon the hill. That's Looking the windmill? Like that. Yeah, that's the windmill. It's certainly it, a windmill. The windmill. Capital T, capital W. A certain okay. bard I once knew would have wanted me to say, it is forbidden. Yep. Is it actually? Um, the Vistani seem to have a bit of a taboo regarding the windmill. I kind of, um, you know, don't, do not disturb sort of thing. It seems by their opinion to be very dangerous. Um, and I decided to not fight her at that time um, as much as I may have wanted to. Um, to I do fight. occasionally show self-restraint. To fight the windmill? No, to go in and ex no, to fight her on the idea of going to the windmill. Um, oh. I was curious about it. We also had concerns about some pies that were being made locally. Um, potentially, maybe not with normal kinds of meat. Oh. Wink. Yeah. We never really followed up on that. Yeah. Wait. What? <laughs> so, so let me get this first. So, <laughs> So you led Victor and his family in and an, an insurrection or a coup? And, no, and no, 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 no. That um, that was a Limus's fault. The onion windmill, and then there's also now a <laughs> you were eaten by a door, but then somehow also in between there was a like a human pie convention that you just decided to skip. What the hell is going on in this country? Welcome to Barovia. But. <laughs> we did manage to make sure that the wine supply stayed. That's true. That's very true. But we true. did get a you. Yeah, are. we did. Uh, you are. Um, the the coup thing was sort of accidental, to be honest. <laughs> the accidental <laughs> coup. Okay. It's an autobiography by Claire. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> One day to be read throughout the land. I mean, it's right there. So you know you want to, Claire. Oh, I know I want to. I, 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 Let's do it. Then. So, what, so what's in the windmill? What we don't know. To is... Go and have a look. We should go. go. and scout. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. So I stretch my wings and uh, take off towards the windmill. Staying a comfortable... I'm trying to remember the blast radius of all the things that have tried to kill us when we get by. Uh, about 30 feet-ish away as I circle the windmill. Okay. Does, do I see any movement around it, DM, or is there any sort of like, do I... Yeah. So, I, l looking for movement. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Um... <laughs> like, is it even working as a windmill right now? Uh, it is turning. It, the blades are turning. so happy. <laughs> And uh, as you make a perception check, as you fly around. Okay, awesome. Is it my birthday? <laughs> Yay! All right, perception check. I perceive. Eek. It is a 10. So that's a... 10? Um, despite Perfectly. the decrepit look, the windows are in fact still intact. I'm on each level. Um, you see light 
emanating from inside, suggesting that um, there is perhaps a fire lit in there or something along those lines. Huh. So it is not dark and you can hear are there sounds any, um... coming from within. Okay. Okay. And are there any, uh, there's no like cart or horses or anything like tied up outside or anything that's like anything that would give away, like be, okay. okay. Not at the moment. And as you are circling around, you do see there was a little raven sort of hopping along the path and it will flutter up and sort of fly in your direction. It reminds you of like a mama bird trying to, you know, um, when you realize, you don't realize you're close to a nest um, and it tries to get you to go away. It's kind of making that um, motion, kind of dive bombing at you, um, flying at you, despite you being many, many, many times larger. It seems to be I, flying I, aggressively towards you. Can I try to grab it? You can make a, uh, uh, it's, it's very unlikely it's going to succeed in getting away from you, but yeah, go ahead. Pop by uh, it will be a contested, um, contested roll here. All right. Uh, what am I rolling, DM, for uh, athletics for or um, yeah, or acrobatics? Is that what all I'm right. doing, man? Grappling rules. I seem to forget. That's uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. So yeah. I'm gonna roll my acrobatics roll. No, it, it's, it's athletics it's, versus athletics, athletics or acrobatics. Yeah. So it'll oh, be okay. athletics. Thank you. Oh, so I have to roll athletics. Thank you. Correct. All right then. Oh. Crit failed that. You so have no idea how lucky a, you are. A, that is a five. So a... fucking lucky. The uh, raven rolls a 20 and kind of <laughs> flaps away and um, continues to <laughs> kind of dive bomb at you. I really want that sound that you just made as the raven to be like my text notifications <laughs> from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Missed opportunity uh, sound pack. Kind of like uh, a Mars attack sort of thing. Ah, uh, that movie scared me so much the first time oh I saw God. it. I had nightmares. Seriously? Between that yeah, I was and also a... six years old when I saw it. I don't oh. want to talk about that. What? All right. All right. So, uh, having, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, having been harassed by a bird. Now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fly back to the group. And as I land, like, um, okay, so for being a decrepit windmill, uh, all the windows are barred and there seems to be light and, and there's definitely noise coming from inside. And also there was a, a raven that was really insistent. Do not fuck with the ravens. Did you kill it? Just... I'm sorry, did you kill it? No, no. Oh, uh, and, God. and I tried to catch him though. What so the doing? next time you ever have the opportunity to do that, don't. Well, it was just, I mean, he was, he was flying at me. He went, but was it like attacking you? Like, what was it doing? I second to Limus's question. Oh, it was, uh, 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 so, I, I mean, if you ever, like, approach a nest or anything, like, a, the bird will kind of take, like, dive bombs at you to kind of, like, drive you away. But it was, like, it was clearly protecting something or at least wanted me to, to you know, get out. And, uh, uh, Does that sound I right, Macantha? That sounds a little odd, but it definitely sounds like it was protecting something. I mean, crows don't typically, they don't typically do that, no. And it kind of, you see it land back down on the path in front of the um, windmill. That's, Why yeah, is that's it definitely just... not crow behavior or raven behavior. Let's go say hello. You want me to talk to it? Sure. Yeah, why not? I will da, 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 da. Okay. speak with animals and attempt to talk to it. Okay. Exactly what Sarif did. We'll do it at the first It kind of level. hops up closer to you and yeah. Flaps in your direction. Still my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Z did you a favor. So, yeah. um, hi, Mr. Crow. Raven. What are you Danger! doing? Danger! Danger from what? 
Inside! Danger! Go away! What's in there? Pain! Well, I don't... I don't really like pain. Should, no. should we not go in there? Go away! Danger! He says, he says there's danger and that we probably shouldn't go in there. So you asked him, if, you, like? you, asked, you asked him if we should go in and he said, never more. Get out. <laughs> yep. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 exactly. No. You can see Shut yourself out. out I one. mean, John, I'm, I'm, I'm weak and weary of your jokes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, Poe Peter. Oh. oh, you're horrid. So, so uh, what what did the danger look like? Kind of. Mm. Human, human. There's there's humans in there. Are there lots Ask of them? Ask them if they're baking. Are they baking? Doesn't really understand what baking is. Um, oh, are they making pies in those little round things with like the lots of stuff on top of them, and they have like the little the little crust in there and the little the little pants? Yes, he says they're baking. Well then. Oh no, it's the no. Danger! Go away! Oh, Go away! Well, well we're I'm trying. Why did, why did you attack my friend? Warn! Warning! Go away! Danger! Danger! Oh, you're so sweet! Five um, I'll open up my pack and I'll pull out like some rations or bread or something. Here you go! Thank you! Oh, okay. Snatches one out of the air. A little close to my fingers, but uh, okay. <laughs> Always making friends. <laughs> you're adorable. You should have tried that with the lich, I think. Let's kill us a witch. So, we just burn it to the ground then, right? Because... Do we burn it to the ground? We could fireball it, or... Damn, you know what? It would have been really, really great if we didn't explode all that, like, alchemist fire outside the tower. Yes. I'm still picking bits of it You're out. telling me. <laughs> if I still had the nose, I'm pretty sure that would have taken care of it. So, have you got... You guys have approached up to the up to up the to windmill the at this yeah. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go knock on the door. I don't. That's. I don't think forward. we should do that. He said not to. I mean, the the Acantha clearly said the it's danger. Like, we don't need to go knocking. I mean, we're on our way to other danger. <laughs> yeah. Do we really need more danger? Uh -uh. Well, I mean. All of Barovia is apparently danger. Well, I'm glad you finally got onto that. My attitude here is one way or another, whatever is in here, if they are indeed a danger to people in this region, then it needs to be dealt with. But I, it's fair that we are dealing with a lot of other danger and unlike the last time we are coming through here um we actually might have better priorities Esmeralda, what do you know about this place well i think i have heard that obviously i know what you know so Vistani say it is forbidden um they say something about, uh, about, uh, the, well, it is known among them. You leave them alone and they leave you alone. The villagers, I do not know. To be honest, I did not spend much time in Barovia because the village of Barovia, but I've heard that, uh, well, there's a woman who lives here and she, well, sells her wares in the town. That's all I know. And give some human pie. How nice. Well, to be fair, we don't know it is human. 
that certainly isn't a, an animal I know of. I'm very glad I never ate one of those pies. They, yeah, they really same. They really make them out of people. I just we like no. Did I have one? I don't remember. I think no. you did. I did. I did. <laughs> and then I went to sleep. Um, <laughs> did Harris, she didn't. She Darren, didn't. Oh, she didn't. I cast. Who is right? I you was just another... sorry. I was drunk. Yeah. Okay. She got drunk. I, 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 I took you either. to bed. Because oh, you were me. drunk. Oh. Oh. Drugged me. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys also fed one to a priest, though, to make yeah, him go to sleep. Yeah, that did happen. Yeah, that did happen. Burglar. He's doing great now. We don't know that. Yeah, God. Human pie is disgusting. Pulls out a finger bone. <laughs> I wonder what... It's a bite I, out of I, a skull. I wonder what that fellow yeah. will say when we tell him that his sister is gone. We have to tell him. Oh, oh, oh he's God, smart. What'd you do to his sister? Uh, what that's oh God. Technically, she did it what to her sister. Wait, what? Just takes a sip of wine. Huh? Um, oh God. What happened, Claire? What happened? Um, Are we in trouble? So, early during our time here we were asked to escort a young woman named Irena from the village of Barovia, which is over yonder. I point off in vaguely the right direction. Um, her brother requested it. She was um, being um, pursued by Strahd uncomfortably. Um, and so we were tasked with bringing her someplace safe, which we eventually uh, determined to be Kresk, the town that is to the far northwest of here. And... And you got her to the town? We did. Okay. And oh. then... Well... She disappeared into a magic pool of water and seems to have passed beyond something. Wait, so so there is a way out of Barovia? I think that might have been a one-off. Oh. She was strange. She has seems to have had a reincarnation situation okay. going on. Um, you know, I gotta say, of all the myriads of things that I thought was gonna happen to this girl, I'm, I'm okay. That, that I feel better. I feel better about that than. It was a little stressful at the time, um, and we. Remember thinking that it was a good thing at the time, but now, I'm not so sure. Maybe it was pointless. She's gone. Isn't that strange? What are we going to do about his windmill? Nothing. I think we should... Let's just... I think we should go. But they're... I mean, are, are they making pies out of people? That's not good. We don't know that for sure. I think that's sort of the sticking point here, is we only have suspicions, nothing confirmed. Why is this so I mean, I guess danger? if they are, we, we could just stop them from doing that. That's true. It could be danger for a raven or crow and be uh, a non- A crow's not that intelligent, surely. Yeah, Apple Flat, he-, he I thought, okay, oh, hold on. Is this, was this a decision. raven or a crow? Because we've, we've been saying both <laughs> and I'm now confused. It's a bird. Honestly, <laughs> it's actually a different. rook. So there's that. Get out of here. Which is also <laughs> yeah. a crow family. All right. I'm going to the black flip a coin. What's his genius? I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> What's his genius? She's African and um, <laughs> and yeah. I'm just going to, we're going to see what happens. You know, I was I was going to roll a real dad, but I should probably do this in um, the D4. thing. So I'm going to roll a D4. D4. And if it is an odd number, we go into the windmill. <gasps> and if it is an even number, we pass by 
and continue on on our original path. And this is me you're... flipping a coin, heads or tails, basically. Well, I thought you were trying to figure out if it was a crow or a raven. I didn't realize. Oh, it was a <laughs> point. All right, damn it. Let's See, do it. See, my, my approach to genius. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one very important question at a time, Brian. <laughs> That's how I science. I just right, roll, I just flip right. coins to decide we what things coin, are. We're going in there and fucking I feel like this is like, like you know, <laughs> Pippin and uh, Mary like talking to the elks. At the end. <laughs> I mean, we could switch to Ent speak if you would like. We'll just Wait. be here for another twelve hours. Wait, mm -hmm. so. Four, four is four movie. means we leave. We leave. We jog on. All right. Yep. On your bike. I mean, I could always turn into something and poke my head in a window, or we and could maybe just end up in a pie. We I must. We must. The coin. Yeah, we must obey the coin. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye, windmill. Th this is the rule by which we live. <laughs> Did I turn into Two Face? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so you guys uh... are. Wait, so, so no! <laughs> so, I Maris is furious. You, no, she flipped a coin. Can, we, that's, can that's you live rules, with that conscience? But... If that's gonna be the case. Furious. Flipping a coin. All right, Maris. Yes. You want to go in? I do want to go in. Fine, we'll go in. Great, let's go. I'm overriding executive decision. Wait, Great, so now perfect. We're... Me too. Did we flip another coin? What happened? Oh, we're just going. <laughs> Is already walking towards the window. I I I I flip I flip the coin towards Cypher <laughs> and follow Maris. Oh my God. Do I have to flip it now? I don't understand the coin. Put it Is away. it a rook or a raven? It's my donation to your conscience. It's a seagull. Let's go. I don't. This group is so confused. What kind of bird are you? Are Are you a raven or a rook or a crow? Or a blue-footed uh, booby. <laughs> you know it. You make a make a nature check, Akatha. <laughs> DC of one <laughs> is not a hard. Nature Dungeons and dragons, everyone. This is yeah. definitely a raven. Raven, it's a raven. Crows. Science. Of course, it's a raven. We, just try we to... trust ravens. Ravens are fine. Just messing with well, then why are we not obeying when it said to go in? <laughs> oh, we're going in. We're we trust that there the is danger. danger. So we're going in. Just still walking towards the window. Okay. Uh, you guys, it's you're pretty close. Where the raven was was about 30 feet or so in front of it. So um, you walk up and there is a closed wooden door sitting in front of it. All right. Um... Can I try to perceive what uh, the sounds were earlier from uh, what the sounds were from earlier, DM? Yeah. So, I mean, you can you heard before what sounded like um, almost mechanical sounds. You can only assume that it's the grinding of a wheel that the, um, you know, is the actual uh, mill wheel at the mill working. OK, yeah. um, it's hard to, uh, you know, uh, hear much more over that but you do smell something delicious inside baking pastries it smells great i have a really important question does cyvor yeah. specifically think that it smells delicious uh are you all approaching the door yes. before we do though uh oh if you haven't got inspiration a d20 <sighs> inspiration Thanks to Pixie, you may well have it. So if you haven't Yay! got inspiration, <laughs> oh, okay. oh, look at Elena! Thank you very oh, much, no. Pixie, for the five hundred bits. I rolled a twenty. Oh well. Oh, <laughs> oh it was so close. It was so close. So it looks like it's it belongs mine. to Elena. Oh, mine. <laughs> well done, That's what you oh, get Chelsea. Still got a roll. Points. Oh, oh, oh. But she got Chelsea. 18. Mm. Oh, some good rolls there. Maris. No, that's Maris. No, that's Maris. Oh, I got the what you get. Nope. Oh. Oh, right. she's on the she's on the thing. It is she is. It's yeah. exciting. A class. Yay. So thank you very much, Pixie. Thanks, Pixie. Yeah. Alrighty. I'm standing behind so, in case I get blasted. It smells delicious to any of you who approach the door. Do we want to back up and let Alimus just 
burn this place to the ground, or... Chris hmm. casts Thaumaturgy and tries to blast open the door. <laughs> You're so dramatic. All right. So the door <laughs> flies open. You guys can see inside um, the wind, uh, the bottom floor of this windmill now. Windmill. I don't know why I keep saying it that way. And um, it's a windmill. So um, there's a makeshift cape kitchen in here, but it's kind of dirty. There's there are baskets and old dishware piled up everywhere. Um, adding to the clutter in this, there's a peddler's cart. There's a what looks to be a chicken coop, a wooden trunk, um, and actually a very pretty wooden cabinet. Um, you also hear um, some clucking, some chickens clucking, and you hear almost what sounds like toads croaking. Then wafting out even more now is a sweet smell of pastries. But there's something acrid and sort of rotten also now that you've opened the door. Um, there is a brick oven against one wall and a staircase that sort of ascends the wall, winding the way up. And you hear, um, you then see um, startled and clutching her chest is an old woman um, who goes, ah, you have startled me. Oh, no need for that. If you come for some pies. Is this the same woman that we saw where I just checked my notes and she said her name is Morgantha? Yeah, looks to be. Yeah, okay. Um, this time I'm suspicious. So, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she kind of walks towards the entrance of the, uh, you know, what towards the doorway. Oh, this you time, you um, knocked my door off its hinges. Uh, so the last time we were here, I, I, I was away when most of the pie stuff happened. Um, so I will use divine sense. Okay. Um, she looks at you. Deary, what's wrong? You look to her and you can definitely tell that she is a fiend. Dun, dun, dun. Meanwhile, before anything happens, before any dice is rolled, <laughs> thank you very much, Snake Spinner, who's also donated Whoa. 500 bits. So if you haven't Pond got inspiration, please <laughs> roll a d20 for inspiration. Oh, 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 oh damn. Oh, oh, oh no. damn. Please, uh oh. Someone you get and a me. 20. Oh. Save it. Save it. Roll off. It's lowest, right? Lowest number? Yeah. Just it's... Waldo and the DM oh, rolling up. Here you know, we I go. I like that. Right. Oh, well, Fail. just Waldo got it as well. <laughs> yep. Let's well, roll off. Here it goes. I've got oh, a nine. God. I've got a 13. Oh, We're not looking ah! good. Oh, yes. thank God. Ah! Yes. And with a 13. <laughs> On Friday the 13th, just Waldo. Ooh, oh, right. Back from the dead. Thanks, Spinner. I Let's would like to apologize for anyone that can't, I can't hear any alerts in the moment. I don't know what's going on with it. I'll have to fix it later. But um, I've got everything come up Stop on screen so I can see it. So thank you very much again for the, uh, for the bits. Thank you. Yay, bits. Um, God, where about is this right now. she um, compared to me right now? Uh, she's in the doorway. She's probably 10 feet or so from you. Oh. Um, I, um... Paladin's got a paladin. I I walk a little closer and I say, yeah, you know, um, the last time we were in Barovia, um, one of my friends had one of your pies, and I really, really wanted to try some. And the minute I'm within five feet of her, I'm gonna slash her with my sword. All right. So first of all, make a deception check to okay. start that. <laughs> oh, Damn, <my>. girl. <laughs> oh, nineteen. Oh, Ooh, inter this is interesting. Oh my we god, this is so fun. She I'm glad I blew the door off this place. deceptive. <laughs> That's right. So you see her say that, and you see a, there's a toothy smile across her face. And, uh, and then her eyes narrow as you take your second step. Daughters, we have visitors. Uh, and you will, as you take your step and put your hand on your blade, um, um, you hear the group to your left and then the group to your right uh, two sounds Mother! What if you brought? Oh, they're much too old don't you think, Mum? And we will roll initiative Oh, God Oh, God Fireball, fireball, fireball 
<laughs> I knew it. Are we thinking hacks? We don't have yeah. our dudes selected yet. We actually need to get on the map. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I'm not on the map. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not on the oh. map. Oh. Oops. I, um. Did this a little early. Where did I go? Oh, yeah. Oh. Way to go, Claire. Oh, great. Oh, okay. I rolled a natural one. Ha ha! I will destroy you all! <laughs> oh my god, it's so big! Dear god, it's Giant Waldo! <laughs> Giant Waldo! Can I have the roll that I rolled? It's really yep. good. I have to. Sorry, I do have. To, oh! Did it update your what you guys had already on the tracker? Looks like it. It didn't for me. Did not. So, alright. All right. I'm not on there. Um. So we'll clear off this tracker, guys, and um, I'll go oh. ahead and add turns for you guys. Go ahead and edit them as you see, as based on your oh. first roll, not yeah. as you see fit. My, I was gonna... my first roll was actually shite, unfortunately. Bye. That's really sad. Will it let me? No, stop it. Wait, stop. so you want us to just tell you what our first roll was? Sure, okay. what was your first roll, no, Maris? I had 12. Got a four. Bun, 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 bun. Combat music coming on. Um, we need to figure out where we are, I guess. Um, yeah, so some of this part of the map I'm going to reveal is actually supposed to be part of the second floor of the, uh, you know. I'm on this one. But, got, uh, it. got it, got it, got it. You guys are probably in this area here having approached. Um, we're going to probably have to go theater of the mind here just because of the spacing on this particular map, but we'll just uh, deal with that. But you heard a voice from here. You heard a voice from here as they emerged from the beginning here. Um, does everyone see themselves on the uh, I'm on, initiative? I'm on the map, but I'm not on initiative. All right. Well, what did you roll the first time? 18. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Would question would about Maris uh, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Question about the uh, uh, the um, ring of free movement. If uh, difficult terrain does not affect me, does that mean I can pass through my ally spaces without incurring an extra point of movement? Yep. Holy crap! I would say yes. Would Maris and um. Um, Ethel Flad be over there? Would they be sort likely of not? They'd probably be back yeah. over okay. here. So. Okay, great. Yeah, for some reason, I can't see that part of the map. This one? This part? Like the lower part, yeah. You've placed us where we are, right, Peter? Yeah. Okay. You can't see this right here, Ethel Flad? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Everyone else can? Yeah, I've got it on mine. Maybe try refreshing it. And we'll get there in a we'll get there a bit. Let's go with just uh Giswaldo's turn then. Alright, Giswaldo yeah. will draw his rapier and charge forward at the one that just appeared out of nowhere. Yep. Uh and attack with his rapier. Attack. Attack! Ooh, hitting AC twelve. Um, she will, um, though she seems to be kind of hunched over. She's not as old as the one, um, inside, but, um, yeah, looks yeah. decrepit, but her body moves in a unnatural way. It's almost like her spine distorts to, um, allow her thorax to move out of the way of the jab. She, um, you strike only air. All right. I will move back to be next to no way. Claire here, I think. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember the ten foot aura, guys. Uh, actually, right. I can move even further than that, so I'll just move, move to here. Athel Flood, can you see it now? Did, did you refresh? Are you sort of just sort of, but not, but it's okay. We'll we'll give it okay. a go anyway. <laughs> All right. Um. So then I would like to cast Hunter's Mark on 
this one up at the top. Beautiful. And then I will find my bow. Twice. Did it go twice? It did go twice. So, yeah, the 12. <laughs> uh, the 12, a natural one will automatically miss. Second is an 18, you say? And the 18 will hit. Yay! So, for a 10 plus the hunter's mark. All right. Go ahead and roll that, and that's going to be Cyvor up next as you roll your Hunter's Mark damage, unless you'd like to move. Um, I don't want to move, and I rolled the Hunter's Mark damage already. Oh, okay. I will apply it. Danke. Bitte. All right. All right. I'm going to fly to here, uh, and then take two cracks in my wheel. Oh. Whip your whip back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> when, a problem comes, when a problem comes along. You must whip it. Oh, first one's a 10. That's probably not going to do it. Sadly, no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how I do. And the second one is a 19. That'll do it. Fan frickin' tastic. Okay. So damage on that bad boy is 10 magical slashing. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to burn. Uh, uh, I'm gonna use. Where, where are you? Where are you? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, 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 stunning strike, and so I'm gonna spend a key point, and I need you to make a con saving throw. Alrighty. I have a six. Ah, awesome! So fails. So uh, they're the target is stunned until the end of my next turn. Very good. Cool. Anything else for Cyvor? Uh, no, that no, that was a that was a good little turn. So I'm I'm done for the day. Okay, Akanta. <laughs> for the day, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna go like take a nap, Cyborg. sip a martini while the rest of us duke it out <laughs> down here. <laughs> nope. Cyvor um, just slides away. I almost died. Okay. He, so he almost died, guys. <laughs> okay, so the sister to the left, I am going to cast Infestation. Alrighty. And where we cause a cloud of mites, fleas, or parasites, the target has to succeed on the constitution saving throw. Know, we reach fifth level or it's going to take 2d6 damage. Your spell save is only 13? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, she has a 20 on her save. Okay, well, I guess the fleas won't attack her. Really she seems to stomach. just look around at them crawling on her, and you see one kind of crawling up towards her eye, and a unnaturally long tongue just goes up. And you can hear it crunch between her jagged teeth, and she. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. I think not. You are the youngest looking one. <laughs> I'm really, really old. Really. <laughs> That's, Anything that's, else, Akantha? That's all I've got. All right. <laughs> oh, God. All right, we're on to Maris. So Maris would like to cast um, Radiance of the Dawn oh. on the suckers. <laughs> she does this by tossing her hair back. Just... She's like, a Radiance of the Dawn. <laughs> just like does a little hair flip. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, and so yes, you. I'm gonna. So. Go ahead and post that uh, spell template in here, so we can. Uh, or. It's a channel, isn't it? Yeah, it's channeling Boom. my divinity. Yeah. Let's make a Constitution saving throw. Yep. That's hot. All right. <laughs> Wink. Cool. Of. <laughs> Your wink. Oh my god. All right. Um, <laughs> Stop distracting the DM. So, imagine uh, the got wink. I've sorry. got a, the the one up here. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, a one up here is a twenty-three. Then I've got twelve here and thirteen here. Okay. Well, the twenty-three is 
useless for me, but the other two are gonna take. Would the would the twenty three be a disadvantage because they're stunned? Not on con saves. Oh, on con saves. Okay. okay, so then it'll take two d eight plus eight. Beep boop pop. So, so we're total. looking at nineteen damage. Yeah. Cool. This one takes nine. Uh, and then a half damage on successes. Yeah. Very cool. You see That's this intense. enormously bright. What is the? What does it look like when Maris cast uses this channel divinity option? Okay, so what I'm picturing is this. Yeah. Maris <laughs> steps forward, and and. You can see her, so she's wearing her lovely diadem as visualized by us, uh, or for us by Jade in the art that pops up every so often, but it's like this crescent moon and she starts to chant an incantation and she puts two fingers up to it and then you can, pretty much it's like, it originates from the center and goes outward to each Thing, and it's like this bright bursting ray of light. I love it. But it's like you... silvery light because the moon. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful silvery light seems to damage and they all <laughs> scream out. But then their gaze focuses. This one wow. here begins to weave her hands together and you see this crackling blue energy form. Ah, oh, shake. Shane lightning strong. You cast a spell. <laughs> and I will need Claire, Jeswaldo, Akantha, and Maris to make a dexterity saving throw. Alimus will speak the words Exponentia oh. in Rita. Oh, is, is that a counter spell? You will hear this one over here um, laugh. <laughs> and she will counterspell your counterspell. Can you counterspell a counterspell? Absolutely. Really? You can counterspell back. I can't. You have to use it. No, nope, that's because oh, his is a reaction. Right. That's right. Okay. If he were casting the spell and was counterspelled, he could. He could, if, yeah. Got if it. it was on his turn. But yes, Claire, Jaswaldo, Akantha, Maris, I need you all to make dexterity saving oh. throws. I rolled a natural one. Um, Jaswaldo and Akantha will benefit from a plus four to that roll, but we all rolled pretty shit. Yeah, Four I rolled a nine. 14. All right. Um, got a, a 14, Jaswaldo? Yes. Gotcha. Thanks to um, Claire. That is going to be... Save is going to be... Da, 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 da. Wow, why doesn't it... Uh, you save? <laughs> wow. So, you are fine. Ha! So just while it just sort that of tucks is exactly out of the way. the save. If you have less than 14, the damage is going to be 32 points of lightning damage. Uh, out of the way of the bolt and takes no damage thanks to your patient. Oh no. Very good. 32 points you said? Yeah. Yes. How's the Akantha looking? I thought it was goodbye Akantha. <laughs> um, let's just say she can't take another one of those. This That's one right. will step up to here. Oh boy. Right. And Let's see. Counterspelling, that's no fun. Um, so we're going to get um, Elimus in this one. This time we're going to do Elimus, Akantha, and Athelflaed with our drawing our straight line here. Okay. What's up? Um, just so you know, I would like to, you can finish that first, but I would like to use a reaction upon the damage oh. dealt to me, the first one. Okay, yeah. To uh, cast Hellish Rebuke. Oh, very cool. All right. So. Do, 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 do. Um, she takes 15 fire damage. It'll appear as right, she flame. succeeds on her saving throw. Okay. So 
eight damage of silver fire. All right. And you will see her um, uh, surrounded by that. However, the flames do not seem particularly effective against her. She still takes damage, but seems to be resistant to it. And then I need Alimus, Akanta, and Athelflaed to make a dexterity saving throw versus another lightning bolt. Nineteen. No, Akanta. <laughs> Shit. Can I use a lucky point on her? Not on her. On your own rolls. So, uh, a failure is going to be 30 points. Um, I... Lightning damage? Unconscious. All right. I have to make have death to... saving throws. At the start of your turn. Oh, God. That one is stunned. We will go to Claire. Okay. I'm going to lay into this person here with the side sword of... Flamio. <laughs> Two attacks. Actually, you know, I'm... Pips and puddle up some Yes. Um, yeah. I will actually... Let's see. Um, I will utilize a bonus action first to Vow of Enmity. Her. Okay. So I have advantage on my attacks. Uh, 27. Definitely hits. And I will um, burn a spell slot to smite her. All right. Addition, a level two spell slot for an extra. She's a fiend, so she takes extra damage from this. Hold on, let me double check that. Um, divine smite. Uh, undead or fiend? Uh, she is yes. a fiend. So would you know it? I did know it. <laughs> Fancy that. Uh, so an additional forty-eight. Um, so a total of 10 plus, uh, 31. 31, yes. Very nice. For my first attack, and then <laughs> another one. What is that extra eight there after the 13? That I is think... only for undead. Got it. Um, a 27 again. Okay. Right. Um, I will burn another spell slot for 48 damage. 48, no, I'm kidding. Um, ha, ha, hell of a uh, turn. For another 26 damage. Yeah, paladins are amazing. Yep, yep, burst damage. Paladin Nova damage right there. As this uh, sword of flame, um, you, uh, it cuts through her and it's strange because it is looks like this old frail woman who is um, fighting you, but you think any just Hitting you with your shield should knock her out. You, she shouldn't be taking this, but as the flight, as it cuts across her, it seems to be cutting her flesh, but only partially. Um, she seems to be bleeding all across the floor, this brackish blood, but um, she is still standing somehow as she wails in agony. It's a fiend, I'm anger. not surprised. Um, I, I like, you know, get right up in her face and said, you're not gonna be killing anyone else today, all right? And ah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Elimus. Um, that hurt. Um, Elimus will point into the middle of the room and uh, speak the words: "Testis potentia, motis muris ignis." And cast. You will hear her yeah, say. Also, <clears throat> I don't think so! And we'll counterspell you. So I can't counterspell that counterspell then. You can. Yeah, I counterspell it then. And her daughter counterspells your counterspell. Isn't she stunned? Nope, but she has had her turn. She has her reaction again. There's a second daughter that isn't stunned. Okay. Sadly. Okay. Elimus, that is the end of your turn, unless you would like to move. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, I move back here. 
All right. For God's sake, no one's standing All on right. line. I'm gonna move. <laughs> um, I'm gonna move to there. Oh All right. God's gonna hurt regardless. Dead Waldo, you're up. And Mooted. So they all go uh, on the same turn, right? Is that? They do. They do. Okay. Va. I am going to run past Alimus, run through Cyvor, and up to the one that is stunned to attack her with advantage. Mm hmm. Peter, didn't the last the one, one cast Counter Spell last time and lost the reaction? Sh they had their turn. Oh, okay. She. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I cannot get the um, shift click thing to work with my. Beyond twenty, so, so unfortunately, they get we'll... two reactions before I can oh, get my. Wait, cargo. wait, 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 wait. You counter spelled them on their turn. I was thinking it was yeah, before. I'm, I'm at the end of the turn. You're correct. Um, so it would have gone off then, yeah. So your counter spell would have gone off. Yeah. So I would have got my spell off then, yeah. And um, yes. I apologize. Because <clears throat> if not, then they'd get two yeah. reactions before I even get to go. No, that is uh, that is my um, that is my fault. I'm apologize. Just think, I was just thinking about. Hang on a minute. I'm never going to be able to get one off. Um, yeah, that is cast inwards. Uh huh. Um. And need a DC 16 dexterity save. Okay. Um. You're probably aiming that further back, yeah? The spell? Yeah. No, exactly. Claire's in the... Is in the uh, um, it's facing inwards, so she wouldn't get touched. What or spell is this? Wall oh, it's fire. a wall of, uh, wall of fire. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's facing gotcha. inwards. Gotcha. Okay, and she needs to make a deck save. Interesting. That'll uh, take care of the windmill. <laughs> yeah. She has an 18 on her save, she but saves. she will still take so eight damage. So she'll take four damage, and it continues up. All right, I apologize. That's all good, Jade. And all right, cool. Now it's just Waldo's turn. All right, I will attack the one that is stunned with advantage. Lots of dice rolled. A 14? A 14, uh, actually, unfortunately. it's going to be a 15 because I meant to use the uh, rapier plus one. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the 15 will not pierce her skin. Ah. And then back to next to Claire. Alrighty. The windmill starts to catch fire. All of the, um, um, uh, the uh, wood parts of it start to catch. And you hear um, then starting from upstairs what sounds like crying. Ah. Da, 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 da. Fuck. Fuck, fuck. Way fuck, to go. Fuck, 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 fuck. Wow. Um, uh, I'm just gonna reach on over to for Akantha and like pour a healing potion down her throat. Okay, I think we have plenty of those. I have many, double check. So it's gonna be a regular, just a regular potion of healing. It's 2d4 plus two. Okay. Do I roll that or does she? You can roll it. Seven. All right, Kantha now has five. What? Seven. Okay. Because it's 2d4 plus two. Correct. Now, Kantha is now, again, conscious with seven hit points. That is your action. Anything else, Athelflaed? No, that's it. All righty. Back to Cyvor. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, fly up to the second level and try to smash into the nearest window. Yeah. Okay. You 
come up to the second level and smash into the window. Um, it's not a hard thing to do. It's a not a um, particularly sturdy window, though it is glass. And you see an area here seems to be where the actual millstone is as it is slowly <laughs> grinding away. Okay, but the cries are still like one level up. Like you crash I in. If you stay, you feel you you can feel the floor beneath you is beginning to catch. But whatever cries you hear are um, yelling for help above you. Above. Okay, so I then uh, take. Uh, so, DM, uh, what have I used so far? Has the crash through been my action? Uh, no. Um, okay. About uh, um, they're flimsy windows, so you shoulder through and okay. you have um, probably about enough to do the same to get into the top and that would be about it. Okay, cool. I want to I want to get up so that I want to keep traveling up the windmill to try to get to where these sounds of okay. surprise are. You coming. fly up around to the next one and going through that window will be about your uh, the end of your regular movement. Okay. You uh, assuming you do so, you break into um, yeah, this yeah, room above here. And you see stuffed into two little cages are two human children okay. cowering. And they look at you in terror as your bony wings <laughs> carry you into the room. <laughs> exactly. So uh, as my bony wings carry me into the room, like I immediately <laughs> fold them up and go, hi, my name's Cyborg. You two look cute enough to eat. <laughs> Yum yum yum. They scream yum, and, yum. And, and clutch each other on the in the um in the the crate that they're stuffed into. All right. All right. How? Uh, what's the? Uh, can I make a? I want to make a perception check on the crate to see if it is like. Is it locked? Is it wood? Is it metal? Like what? So, that will be your action to look around at that. You can use perception or investigation. Absolutely, we'll perceive that, and that will be. A nine. So, what does it tell me? Um, they are. Um, you get the sense that they are sort of a sturdy latching mechanism. Mm -hmm. That, um, while not necessarily locked, you, it's it's hard to say. Like it's there's. Is it attached um, to the floor? Uh, no, but they are separate crates. And there is something holding them in there. They can okay. just like reach around and undo. It's childproof. Oh, God, God. Childproof yeah. locks keeping the children inside locks. the boxes. Yeah. So. Absolutely <laughs> keeping those kids inside the box. All right, awesome sauce. And that's where I am. Wow. All right. Uh, oh. Take notes, Ryan. Take notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sean's a parent. Yeah. It, was their side, it was their side wow. business, you know. Yeah. Wow. Selling childproof boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say. Granny's childproof Classic. Reverse right. childproof lock. Anyway. Um. Yeah. No. And that. So. Uh. Burn my action on the perception, and I don't think I have any bonus actions that I could. Um. Yeah. No. Sorry. Uh. Yeah. So. No. That is that is Cyborg's turn for that turn. Right. Cool. Akanta. Okay, so I am going to GTFO. Boop, right there. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself so I don't die again. You should wild save, kiddo. And can I do that uh, if I cast shape. Cure Wounds? Yeah, because Wild, wild shape, shape is a bonus, bonus action. Wild yeah. yeah. is a bonus action, isn't it? Yep. Turn into the okay. beefiest thing you've got. Six. Yeah, like it's a cow. Beefy snake. Or... <laughs> can I turn into a <laughs> woolly <laughs> mammoth? Gorilla? Like a so bison? Not... <laughs> into a what? Into a gorilla? Gorilla. Oh, you, you can? Yeah. Gorilla. Um, unless we think a giant snake would be better. Gorilla. 
Gorilla. I mean, yeah, the giant gorilla. snake was pretty cool, but gorilla. Yeah. Yeah, we're going for gorilla. All and right. And we'll wild shape immediately. So what challenge rating can you turn into? Turn uh, into? up to a two. To two. Because I'm an eight. Please, you're a 10. So the closest thing I have is the ape for that. Okay. Yes. Or did you have anything, are there any other stat block in mind that you had ready? No. All right. So to turn into a medium sized ape, uh, you see this giant gorilla coming, and indeed, it is a bit of a gorilla. You see parts of its flesh are missing. Um, one of its hands is kind of skeletal. All right. Yeah. Katha becomes Gorilla. Anything else? You've already used your action bonus action. I think that is it. So we will go down to Maris. So I have a question. Yeah. If I were to cast a cantrip as my action, am I then able to cast Mass Healing Word as a bonus action? Yes. Since it's a cantrip and not a leveled spell. Correct. Okay. Cool. So let me see. I will go for this baddie right here. The one directly in front of me. Le Keep feu up. sacré. That one. <laughs> um, and I will cast uh, Toll the Dead. Oh, that's a wisdom save. Yeah. Yeah. I have a five as a result. She is damaged, so use your d12s. Okay. Eleven. I believe you have two d12 now, yeah? Yes, 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 yes. So I don't know do you why want me I to just... wouldn't have rolled that. Yeah, roll another d12. Okay. <laughs> well, 12. <laughs> it's like exactly average. That's yep. Right. Uh, but, um,. <laughs> You hear this ring out, and you he see her kind of ah, 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 raking at her ears. Mother! Mother! I'm like, and... that's why you don't mess with us. <laughs> Talking mad smack. <laughs> and she looks sexy on you. Mad. She looks mad. Okay, and then as my bonus action, I will cast. Um, mass healing word on everybody in my party because I can see all of them. Except for Cyborg. Except for Cyborg. And where's a Limus? I'm there. That's right a Limus? He's like right in front of you. Yeah. I thought that was just Waldo. I thought that was dead Waldo. That's this Waldo. is They're dead right Waldo. Next to each other. They're right next oh. to each other. No, right. I can't see someone's token. It's gone from my map. That's fine. Okay. So I will cast. Beep, boop, pop. For eight points of healing Solid. for everybody. Very nice. And since I can't see Cyborg, sorry, bud, I'm going to take those eight points for myself. No, I'm good. I'm... Okay. Cool. I'm and daddy so daycare, so it's good. <laughs> Perfect. That's my turn. Um, This one will... um yell out to its uh, yeah, mother and we'll look at you guys who are in front of here and I'll need the let's double check yes we'll rinse and repeat the three of you must make a dexterity saving throw unless Alimus wants to counter spell again. he does at fourth level All All right. about standing in lines Did I go to count the spell that? It's a little bit of a... Um, you know? <clears throat> Use up those spell slots, come on. Yeah, this one is no longer stunned. And it will see that and it will counter spell. Um, they are out of third level slots and must use a fourth level to counter spell. Yeah! It is, uh, so they will do so. Okay, um, I cast it at third. I would normally have, uh, what's that? So they, they have to cast it at fourth. 
they did. They have to. Okay. I they would have had they had a third level slot available, they would have cast it at third, okay. but they use their last third level slot to do that. So it's all right, man. It's cool. I'm just explaining it as the as the DM that I didn't hear your fourth and automatically do a fourth as well. So. It's awesome. That's and awesome magic battle and it's saving and our butt. So the uh so deck saves the three of you miss my deck saves that is just wall of two right so i correct y'all uh, i have uh plus four i rolled an 18. 24. no damage ha 19. 20. that's good and how about sorry what did you get claire wow 18. look at you guys are you so good at deck saves um yeah, i'm usually not paladin. All right, so it is a 27 or uh, a 13. Other on a, uh, or a zero. Yeah. Or a zero if you're just Waldo. I don't like that, though. And so as this other one l looks at you and points towards you, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Very well. I rolled a 24. Ooh, look at you with that natural 19. You are unaffected. What was the spell out of curiosity? I bite. Oh, that would have sucked. What? <laughs> and Mama can't see, so she's just gonna repeat the um, uh, what she did before. I smell popcorn downstairs. So. Is this the witch talking, or is this? We're gonna have talking? Mara. No, it's gonna be the... Maris, Jeswaldo, and Claire making the saving throw for this one. I know. I was like, does Peter smell popcorn? Or does... I do <laughs> smell popcorn pop down. Twenty-three. It's the wow. Witch. Again, no damage. Yes. I'm gonna roll mine with advantage, using you my. Said um, wisdom or dex thing. Dex. Um, she, well, you said the same thing, so she did another lightning bolt. Yes. Yeah. I'm having a little trouble. Did you rolling with, it at um, advantage? Yep. Yeah, Just roll I'm, another one. You're fun. Yeah. You're fun. The full damage is going to be 29 that you yeah. both take on the That's failure. Rough. Oh well. How tall is your wall of fire, Jade? Um, I think it's 10 feet. Double check. Oh, I've got to make a concentration check, have I not? Oh, uh, yeah, if you took damage, definitely. 20 feet high. Ooh. Concentration check. I'm uh, feeling lucky. Good. That would foul, wouldn't it? Nine? Oh, a Nine automatically fails any um, concentration, concentration check. Okay, I'm feeling so. lucky. Are you now? I rolled it again, and it rolled it on my on like a the D and D Beyond thing as a three D dice, and I got a fourteen. <laughs> fourteen is going to be just enough. Twelve Especially plus. Especially don't forget you have the uh, the aura from, from uh, oh. Claire. Would, would a thirteen been enough then? No. Okay, fourteen then. Uh, so yeah, well we've been in eighteen then. Why not? I've got three D dice turned off, so I don't know why it did that. Let me turn it. Let's go back in and turn it off. Um, oh, she moved? Um, I don't believe you can see her through the wall of fire. Okay, I was curious about that. I was actually just about to ask for yeah. other purposes. So she is going to move. Claire, you're up. Does she move there? She, she will take, yep, yeah, go ahead and she take, take, yep, to take damage she, from her. She will, yeah. she will need to make another, uh, she, she will take move. damage from this wall of fire. Why is it, get off that for Christ's sake. I don't know why it's doing that, but... Ooh. DC 16. Ooh. Is it a con save then on subsequent, or is it it's still dex? dex? save still, I believe. Uh, she has a 16 on the dot with her. Passes. They seem he to says be... that there's no save after the first one. Was it not? Okay. If I, I heard, I just heard you call but... for save. So, pa, pa, pa. 
Yeah. So she will take 13 points of damage from that. You'll hear her crying out in pain on the inside. Good call out, guys. Thank you in chat. Lot to keep track of as we go along. And that is, let's see, have they all taken a turn? Oh, no. yeah, she doesn't get to roll again. Um, I don't know, it's each creature within the area. They all have taken a turn, right? Yeah. I think so. This one lightning bolted, she lightning bolted, she eye bit. All right, so now we're up to Claire. Um, Of the two um, young They're ladies pretty outside, equal. Yeah. pretty equal looking? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I suppose I will step to the closest target over here. Oh, Peter. Um, What's up? It's only when it's conjured. So does that mean that she's automatically passed the first roll? Because obviously she stays within the fire. So that would mean she'd take the full amount, right? She did. Yeah, oh, that's okay. what happened. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got resistance. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yes. Yep, she, yeah, she just got resistance to fire. Yeah. Yep, you got it. All right, Claire. Yeah, I was, I was doing a, a, a little bit of a think here. Sorry. Um, you I, run up uh, to her. <laughs> Let me ponder my actions here for a moment. Um, no, I... Uh... <laughs> maybe maybe um, the stabby actually, thing. Actually, here, here's a, oh, an, an actual ponderance. Um, is Victor present? Um, All of our Victor? allies would be present. They are... <laughs> But you Always guys in your are heart. taking you guys are taking care of this one. Okay, just <laughs> um, I will bonus action hexblades curse the daughter. All right. Um, for some extra damage and other things, and then I will um see if I can attack her with this sword. How's a nineteen? Hits definitely. Delightful. Um, let's roll up some damage here. So, um, I'm gonna nine, I'll burn a spell slot, um, to hit her with an extra 3d8, since I used all my big boys on mama, and then that's, uh, 19 plus three for Hexblade's Curse, so a total of 22 on the first mm -hmm. attack. And I'll do it again, I hope, for 20. I would, I would mm -hmm. like roll 20, please roll my damage. Please and thank you. Ooh, roll that's, it out. that's tasty. I will burn another spell slot because why not? These are basically just candy. Um, nom, nom, nom. Roll another. Ooh, that was tasty. Um, so. That one's for us, Steven. Um, <laughs> so uh, 13 plus 19 plus 3. All righty. So 35. 35. 35. 35. You strike through her twice she is looking quite damaged and she cries out in pain and cries for her mother oh someone Anything just else? kill this bitch I don't know if that's how I end my turn <laughs> well I missed uh, I want to say my pleasure but Limus is running out of resources <clears throat> um, I will look to the one that Claire's just hit cast Ray of Frost um, feeling lucky. Guess that's gonna miss. We have a 26. 26 is definitely gonna hit. 10 cold damage. Let me check here. She will resist some of that damage. But it will hurt her. Damn it. Anything else for you? I plan to move. All right, go ahead and move yourself, uh, and then we'll be at Giswaldo. All right, I have missed. I'm ready to not miss. I run up and I attack. <laughs> Day 16. Um... Unfortunately, it will not quite pierce Son her hide. Of a bitch. You rolled with the plus one this time? Yeah. I did with the plus one this time. Gods be damned. God damn it. 
Off day, friend. O odds were not in your favor on this particular. <laughs> and uh, Athelflaed, you're up. She is looking very bad. She's looking healthy. Finish it. Finish it. I will finish it and unmute. See, see how that works. We're just gonna, yeah, go for the, go for the shitty one. Do you want to recast Hunter's Mark first? Well, that's what I was like. If I, if I transfer, is it a bonus? You would have to totally recast it, but it's still a bonus action. Burn the spell slot. Just Correct. Do it. I know. I was like, <laughs> nobody else has been burning spell slots. Uh Trust me, I'm nearly out. Oh, I'm missing. I, yes, I, I am. I'm nearly out. Uh, if we're going to Ravenloft, so I much, need to rest. So much sarcasm, you guys. <laughs> recast it. So, yeah, recasting to nearly dead. And then, where is it? Firing my longbow twice, you bitch. Seventeens? Both right on the money. Barely. Pacha. Pacha. A nine and a twelve? Plus my hunter's mark yep roll another d6 the first one was one mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then a two <laughs> yeah and so the first um um arrow will catch in her stomach and she'll <gasps> bend over in pain and she looks up to you <gasps> just in time to see the last arrow strike her straight between the eyes Suck it. I spit on and her body and she falls one, over. Uh, this one cry. <gasps> Bella! <laughs> Apparently, she had a name. Zoom Awkward. hates people screaming because it cuts people off that scream. Bella! I mean, yeah, still cut, you, still you, cutting you off. It, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it can someone also like, make like, that, that a secondary yeah, ringtone ring for show. me? That shit yeah. is noise, like not it. voice. So oh, it just... Uh, it doesn't right. like the name Twilight. It's fine. It just like You're blacks up, uh, out. It's like no. Cyvor, it's your turn. All right, I have two ideas. You tell me if either one of them are crap, DM. Okay. okay. Uh, first idea. It's I like both. This game. No. I have two attacks, so I want to attempt to grapple, i.e., grab both cages and then get the hell out the room. Or option two is I want to. Uh, use my attacks to try to break the locks on both of the cages if that's okay. an option. You could do either. You could attempt to Excellent. do either. Excellent. I'm going to attempt, so then I'll, I'll start with the, the, the one that gets the kids out of cages first. Because, like, how hot is the room right now, DM? Am I like... Um... It, so, start of this round, the fire spread to the second floor. You think by next round, it will be um, burning the floor below you currently, that you're standing on, essentially. So. Okay. 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 So, um, yeah, I'm going to, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the, the cages and I'm going to attempt to grapple both cages and, and get them out of the room. Okay. With two okay. hands, you sheathe your weapons, pull both of them up. Make an athletics yeah. check. Oh, great. Oh, shit, you can stretch. fit them just barely out the window, but yeah. holding on to them to get to the ground is tough. All right. Yeah, you only got a glide. Or forward 21. Style. And you're able to 21. keep your wings afloat as you, uh, you feel like your tendons are about to snap in your wrist, but you laid both of them down and they are, the two children are screaming, thinking they're going to someplace worse than where they were. You're fucking right, right. But That's right. The hero that Barovia deserves. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so so where does like, he- He flies off into the night. <laughs> where does he end up? Um, uh, which window do you go out, Cyvor? So if, four choices. Hang on, let me, yeah, let me let me take a look at my uh, at my map here, so I'm not lying to you. Um, okay, so Don't uh, you dare I'm. Don't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> Swear to me. Swear to me. <laughs> to me. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna head out this window uh, to then fly back down uh, towards the ground, which would be, if I'm not mistaken, like here-ish is where I'm looking to land. Okay, you can do that come around okay. towards me maybe but those children who will die in like a single hit of anything <laughs> you know little babies little squishies <laughs> them sweet little squishies sweet right. little squishy nugs 
So, uh, a- so that was movement and action. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to bonus action, then step of the wind, be it burn a key point, and like take the kids as far the frick away. From Maybe over the... to our allies who are like sitting around, like, what do you think those idiots are up to now? Yeah. Is that are they burning that, yeah. that windmill, that windmill on that. fire? I, I <laughs> smell something. Yeah, that windmill's been here for hundreds of years, you know. Just <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a treasured Barovian landmark. Oops. Yeah. All right. Not All anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say half movement to be carrying. Yeah, the two absolutely. Yeah. So that'll so that's uh, hit the ground and then 25 feet out. So. Got it. Mm, Akanta. <laughs> is going to be your turn. Okay. So, Kanta, uh, excuse me, Goranta. How, how big is the ape? Is it that sized? It is medium sized, but okay. it is very strong looking. So. Right. Definitely larger than Akanta's body. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope I'm not going to die by doing this, but my gorilla form would run up and... Go gorilla smash with my fist. All right, you get two attacks. Go okay. go gorilla. Now, I'm not super familiar with this in D and D Beyond, but let's see what happens when I hit this button. All right. What happens when I press the button? Unfortunately, a 13 is not quite gonna hit. Okay. Let's just hit another button and see what happens. Do that and do it again. Do you get any sort of bonus to your attack it's as a druid, or is it just it's on there already? Plus oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's it. yeah, it's on there. Nineteen. Nineteen definitely hits. Yes. Give her a nice punch for eight damage. Uh, right in the face. Oh, did right it in the, the face already? Yeah. Eight bludgeoning. Nice. Yeah, right, right in the face. I'm just gonna go. Bam. She takes it and looks angrily at you. Okay, and that will be. Really don't care. Yeah, yeah. Don't care. really don't care. And then you, you bonus action fling some poo in her face. Classic Garantha. Can I can I do that? <laughs> no, I would. I, mean, I kind of want to know. <laughs> I mean, it's been brought up. I believe it's been brought unless up. Unless you have a bonus action that you can do, I think that's gonna be it. No. Okay. Well, I don't want to die. So, as bonus action, if I could move like to the left or right i'll do that you can use your action you can continue your movement to move but um if you move away from its threat range you will provoke an attack of opportunity oh gross no okay we're just gonna stay right there and just glare okay you glare with gorilla-esque intensity and maris you're up okay so because I've got some friendos to heal. My my strategy will not have changed much. Um, so I will cast again Word of Radiance. And I'll cast it on this baddie right there. The one next to Akanta. Okay. We need a save from that. Uh, yes, constitution save. All righty. Um, I have a natural, tw- or a dirty 20. Ah, that's devastating to me, but it's going to be okay. Um, <laughs> so... Word of Radiance have to be close to her to do that? Uh, within five feet. Am I, I'm too far away, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then never mind. Can we just like scratch that as ever happened? Uh, you could move up to her if you want and do it. Ah! I'll do, um, instead, I'll do Toll the Dead again, and that's within 60 feet. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's see. What you Wisdom. Cost? Wisdom of 15. Uh, I have another, rolled again, I have another 20. Good grief. Okay, well then, this has just been really awesome for me. Anything um, bonus action-wise? Yeah, it would be so great if I could cast Healing Word on Claire. Mm. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the way I, I didn't see who went, hmm, with 
He I said, like, and I was like, mm, that would be so great mm, <laughs> if I could do that. It'd be so great if I could do that. Um, yeah. mm, like, I'm not mad that nothing else worked, but like, it's fine. <laughs> It'd be so great if I could do one thing right. Uh, and so I got you eight points Thanks, of healing. Thanks, Of course. Okay. That's so max that... healing words, so you did that. That's true. All right, so that's my turn. All Actually, right. wait. Can I drink a healing potion, or have I done my... You've used your full action economy. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. You haven't moved. Oh, so I could get out of... But it doesn't... I mean... I don't know how much that would matter. I'm going to run to be next to Cyborg. Is that possible? Yeah. Here to here. Okay, great. I think so. Yeah, that would be about 25 feet. He is uh, currently carrying two crates filled with screaming children. Yeah, that's why I ran over there to be helpful. Getting ready for fatherhood. All right. And um, <laughs> you see this one. <sighs> Sister! <sighs> And she begins, she looks at you, Akantha, and begins clawing at you. Rude. Um, you see that the form of this young woman sheds away, and now this sort of um, disgusting blue-skinned creature that looks like that on your uh, Roy begins to, uh, takes form. And she claws at you. We'll have a... 17 to hit. Akantha is going to be 12 points of slashing damage. And from inside, <clears throat> you hear, ah, ah. Good luck, daughters. And... She buggered off! Yeah, she scampered. She scampered it away. <laughs> yeah, it will be Claire's turn. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, let's see. Two, three. Ha ha! I get up in her face. Hello, ape. Um, and uh, oh, I did forget earlier that at the uh, the death of the other daughter, I regained some hit points that I forgot about. All right. Um, but I it's will... It's a bit of mine forgot. Thank you. Um, I'll uh, smack her a couple times with my sword. I hope. Uh, 21. I roll some damage. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna get a smite, because I'm, I'm doling them out to everyone. You know, it's, it's my gift to humanity. Or not humanity, I guess. Um, you want to spy? You want to spy? Everyone wants to spy. Yeah, so that's a you 23 damage. Okay. Her. I assume she's still standing, and I will. She is. Do, 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 do. Come on, you can do it, roll 20. You can do it. Uh, 18. I think hits. that's also hits. Yes. I roll some damage, and she can have another smite. Wow. Yay. So many smites. Uh, to, 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 not this good. Uh, 24. 24. Done. Yes. Starting to get there. Yay. Elimus, you're up. Um, <clears throat> okay, I will. Would I be able to tell if I was still burning her? Can I tell that with my spell? Um, no, you cannot see what is happening inside. 10, 15. I will hit her with a ray of frost. With a 26 to hit. Super hits. For only seven cold damage. All right. And then I will move. So what did I move there? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30 out of the way. Cool. No, 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 no. There. Me done. There we go. The battlefield is yours to the gentleman. Um, let's see if this goes a little better. Uh, the odds are, in fact, in your favor. Are they? Uh, well, this will be a 
attack with my rapier plus one. Better. 19. Hits. 26 points of piercing damage. You did Ooh. it! It hurts her very, very, very much. She seems within um, a last, last grasp of her life. I'll move around behind her. Oh. Athel Vlad. Okay, transferring Hunter's Mark since the last one died for my bonus. And then two bows right to her face. Two bow. Two bow to the face. To the face. Both will hit. I was gonna say. Does a 25 hit? You cannot do damage that would not kill her. We'll put it that way. She had then should I... eight hit points left. I was going to say, do I even need to roll my hunter? How do you uh, how do you dispatch this last one? And second one for you. So you land uh -huh. both killing blows here. Um, she only had four, so I only get one hit. Oh, she only had eight, so I only get one hit in. Um... Honestly, I would like my arrow to shoot right in her open mouth because I'm sure she was. I'm sure she. She was about mouth. to say something, certainly. Yeah. So now she gets a mouthful something of arrow. Something really cool. Beep, 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 beep. Opens and it goes straight <laughs> through the back of her mouth and whoosh, out the back of her neck, and the head just lolls to the side, and she slumps lifeless. Yeah. Looks so like she that. got the shaft. No, it looks like she got <laughs> arrow. <laughs> Uh, oh, God. Sean, the screams, favorite thing. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the fire continues to burn, taking hold of most of this windmill. That's fine. I got the kids out. We didn't like the windmill much anyway. Uh, I get rid of the. Uh, I, I get rid of the uh, wall of fire, but I take everything still on fire in there. So I leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> I uh. Okay. No, no, we yeah. keep it. I was never really fond of the onion top. So, yeah. that was a fiend, right? You said? Yeah. Was I wonder if she had anything interesting on her. Um, well, she definitely had two, these two kids. We should get them out. Jeswaldo, you're a whiz kid with locks. It's like, he's, he's great with kids. I suppose. Oh. <laughs> Do I know that they're oh. hags? Can I make a roll for that? Um,. Sure, make an arcana or religion check. Arcana it is. 24. Absolutely hags. You think they are likely night hags. Well, I look for their eyes. The eye that they might have. There the are eye. four eyes, in fact. Do they have any... Uh, because I know they have some sort of uh, hag's eye, don't they? Are you talking about the... The... Uh, um, Soul bag? What is it called? The, um, oh yeah, it's something that they use to travel, isn't it? Or yeah, to see. And... So, um, they have. You would know that they have what is called a. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it's called. Um, the. Sorry, I will think of it. Yeah, a heart stone. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I search for heart stone. All right. Just Waldo. Uh, just Waldo. Sorry, go ahead. Finish. We'll find two of them. Each will have one. So I know. Just Waldo to destroy pulls them. off his gloves, revealing skeletal fingers as he goes to unlock the cages. Oh God. Do you use your finger to do it? Like pick it with the bone? I don't <laughs> think. I, I mean, we'll see what I roll. Yes. Yes. Athelflaed. Yes. I was like, someone said. Thirty. Someone say I it. do use I my do. finger. Oh my god, fucking yeah. I, I just... And... Round. It is easy. Amazing. It clicks open. And the what children else? scream again. <laughs> I will run up to the kids and try to calm them down. Alright, make a persuasion yeah. check. Claire is... Uh, uh, or not Claire. Uh, Maris is already there, too. And so she would Do also you want like to assist me? Are you... Are to... you... Um, are you uh, proficient in persuasion? Uh... I'm I'm not. I am. Liz, you got mooted. I am I am <laughs> I'm very not, persuasive. I just love and him. I am persu I am proficient. <laughs> Are you I guess who's proficient? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well so someone who's um 
proficient can God. give me a little. Oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna roll. Yeah, <laughs> let me help these kids so they don't have therapy for the rest of their yeah. lives. Come on, roll the die. Oh my God. Oh, they're already gonna be in therapy yeah. for the rest this of their enorm lives. This enormous armored woman starts running over towards them. To, you're, uh, not enormous, but this armored woman, you know, <laughs> clanking over um, is also uh, a frightening sight as they yeah. are just oh, God. now You're just fine. beyond fear Lord, and just kind of sitting you. here in pure <laughs> shock. Giswaldo kind of giggles as he walks away, just like... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> um, kind of relax, kids, relax! <laughs> Shut up. Uh, what is your problem? Like, we have NPCs that are as... relatively nearby that could maybe, if the kids took chill a bit, and aren't... Casimir like... has no interest in it, but Esmeralda will try to help. Um, Smarlda, please help. <laughs> uh, Save them from the monsters. It's, uh, I'm not very... I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't know how to do this. But, okay. Come here. And she tries to... We should feed them wine. It always worked on me. Just Waldo. <laughs> it did. <sighs> yes, and you turned out marvelously. So, no. I'm sure these kids will be just fine. They're, they're clearly like, they have souls, right? Like they're, they're, they're not acting in like the, <laughs> no, 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 that's a relevant question here. So they're definitely not two year olds is what I'm easy, hearing. That's an actual question. The, um, the amount of terror smite? they were expressing um, seemed to yeah. suggest so. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it will take some time. The children will calm somewhat, though not really warm to anyone Aww. particular. But they are also not crispy. So that is a... Yeah, or locked in cages forever now. You're welcome, kids. Yeah. Wow. Right? Merry wow. Christmas forever. Yeah, <laughs> you're friggin' welcome. <laughs> what else do I find on these hags? And do I know what to do with these uh, heart stones? Wait, they were hags? Yeah, they were hags. Yes, they were hags. Do we did we get all of them? Two of them, I believe. <sighs> Unless you have ones inside, you... crispy. Um, the heart stones are sort of vital parts of their dark magic. So, um, they are wholly evil. So these need to be destroyed. Can we smash them? Sure. What are we waiting for? <laughs> oh my god. Do they have anything else on them? Um, they do not, no. And the windmill begins to... It's like, should we check inside the wind? Rumble down, and you see the top. <laughs> Crumbles. Falls on the kids. And it crashes. Shit. Oops. I'll, oh, um... On the kids! Bye. At a safe distance away from the collapsing structure, I'll go to town on smashing these things that Alimus has procured. Okay. Yes. Breaking the They're heart stones children. apart. As you all begin to figure all of this out, you know, follow through on this, you notice at the crossroads standing there, you didn't notice when it got there, but there it sits, is a stately black carriage pulled by midnight horses. Beautiful creatures. It sits there. And as you regard it, the door swings open, revealing a comfortable looking, empty leather clad interior. The horses sit there, just pawing at the ground. One more fireball. Well, so much for us not being noticed on our approach. I wish to go to the festival. The festival? <laughs> the poor girl's mother had died! <laughs> was, wait, was we Our carriage is waiting. The straw <laughs> is planning our fall. Cinder well, Cinderella's um, Maris. In, Bro uh, Gil, guys, this in, is not good. in dark ebony filigree on the side of the. Um, uh, carriage, you do see the letter S. I mean, if or we're cyborg. going in there and accepting, we're like 
tapped out right now. So this isn't a fight. This is a fucking yeah. civil discussion. It was always going to be that, you know. I'm aware. I'm just making sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, there's no we're way. I mean, I'm almost passed out at this point. Yeah. Got one third level left. I've got my second and first. Well, he invited us. Let's see what he has to say. I think he has we... other interests in mind at this point. If we you go in the know. carriage, that entirely loses the surprise element, which was the whole point. If he right, has sent, if he has yeah. sent a carriage to our exact location, do you think he is never not aware of exactly where we are? Hmm. Well, I don't think. I don't I, think, I think our fight helped that. The game is up here. I think we take the carriage, and if we have the opportunity to pursue our various search intentions, that we take them. DM, cool. is the carriage big enough for all of us and our NPCs? Gorilla can just ride on top. <laughs> Gorilla could be a snake. Mm -hmm. It might be a bit of a scrunch. Probably oh. not with the children, though. Well, time to abandon the kids, guys. Bye. <laughs> um, they've clearly been abandoned before. They're going to be fine. <laughs> They don't like us anyway. Velaki sits isn't... at the crossroads. And what, what's that? Velaki isn't too far away, right? At this point, um, Barovia is actually probably closer. Oh, is it? Okay. By about how long? I remember we passed this way previously. Do we know where the um, kids came from? Actually, I'm wrong about that. Um, Velaki would be closer. Okay, I actually, Cyber makes a very good point. Um, I'll kneel down in front of the kids. I'm sorry I frightened you before. She's a really nice person. <laughs> She's usually like not threatening. I got a little freaked out after a fight. Um, we would like to take you home. Where is home? Do you know? The villages of Barovia and Velaki are near here. My mom? My mom? But I don't want to go back there. Back home? Yeah. Why? Make a persuasion check. Ooh. Can I get an advantage because Cyber said I was nice? <laughs> yes. Would she, would she give double advantage if Akantha turns into a puppy? Negative. Oh. <laughs> would be very uh, good. 19. I feel, like, I feel like that would persuade Akantha. <laughs> <laughs> she needs more friends anyway. <laughs> Mom gave me to the icky lady. At least Don't want to go back. Consistent. Did the, um, did the icky lady give your mom pies by any chance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Shit, my heart. Um. Okay. Um. What are your names? Um, name is... Myrtle. His name is 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 Freak. Okay. Spelled F R E E K. Okay. I, I was know. wondering. I was yeah. like. <laughs> sounds like Myrtle and Freak's mom's a, a real winner. <laughs> she sounds great. Especially with these names, Myrtle and. Oh. Myrtle is a sweet old grandma name. Myrtle is a sweet old grandma name. I don't give it to a child. Do I, damn, do I obviously, the, the last hag left. Do I know if she'd be coming back, where, where we could find her? You know that um, hags through your arcana check can slip into the ethereal plane. So she could be watching us, basically. 
potentially. And are known to haunt the dreams of um, those they seek to corrupt. And obviously killing two of them. What does that now affect her? Based on your very high arcana role before, you would also know that um, they have powers through their covens. Um, three or three or more of them are together. Their powers are increased um, exponentially. Um, when one fell, you notice that the spell casting stopped for the most part. Mm. And uh, that is the case. Though one hag can make more, though it takes time. I can think of one person who might be willing to look after these children. Who? Wasn't there a priest in Barovia who lost a son? There was. Yeah. Okay, so where's where's Barovia? Barovia's a bit far. Requires going over the waterfall oh, again. <laughs> approach the carriage okay and it, which way is it pointed right now it is pointed um well it is pointed continuing along the road you went which would eventually lead you to barovia or ravenloft I'm going to talk in sort of the general direction of the carriage and the horses. And I say, uh, We are happy to accept your invitation to dinner, but we have a very important errand to run first, as I would not be inclined to bring two children to a dinner where serious matters may be discussed. So, if you would be so kind, could we use the carriage to drop them off in Barovia first? If there's any way for you to make this known to me, a yes or no, maybe one lightning flash in the sky for yes, two for no, whatever your will be, maybe make it known? The horse kind of <clears throat> stamps its foot and shakes its mane. Simply sits there. Like, Damn, it, like it was this. worth a shot. Like... <laughs> yeah. Don't think it was going to be The interior, you can, shot. as you approach it, you can see it. You can now smell it. Or you can now smell fine leather and cedar wood from the inside. It smells of luxury. Akantha, can you speak to this horse? see if it will take us to Barovia first. Oh yeah, I can do that. And I shall go over to the horses and Hi horses! <laughs> it kind of turns its eye towards you. We need to ask you for a favor. We, we want to we wanna go to the dinner because it's going to be really, really fun and we're going to have lots of fun and talk about all kinds of cool stuff, but we really need to do a really important thing first. Can we maybe use the carriage to take these kids all the way over to Barovia first and then we'll keep going? Its response seems to be simply No. I take you home and I can eat oats. What if I give you extra oats to draw the takes to Barovia first? Mm. Mm. Maybe some carrots. Yeah, maybe carrots. Sugar. I like sugar. And sugar. These are great. Keep them coming, Alimus. More <laughs> sugar? Apple. Apple. Give me some apple. Do you want sugar? Do you want sugar? Sugar? Do you like sugar? We'll give you sugar. I'll give you a whole bunch of sugar if you take the sugar. Come it kind of starts to look in your direction and then you hear a strike of thunder. And... I need. I'll look tall, turn to Alimus. And I it need starts, sugar. its eyes are hard and wide, and it goes, I go home and I get oats. Oh, are 
you Go scared? home, I get oats. I'll reach up and pet its little nose. If I go home, I don't get the whip. Well, that's... Oh, wait, I can't understand that. Never mind. He's... He said he'll get hit with a whip. Elimus, give me the sugar you were talking about. Oh, I haven't actually got any. You burned it all down with the bakery. <laughs> you had me lie to the horses? That's oh. not very nice. I just wanted to see if it worked. Well, now we don't have anything to give him. Oh, he's not going to take us anyway, so there's no deal. Well, what happens if I unhook you from the cart and just one horse and me takes the kiss to Barovia and then we come back? Can't you turn into a horse? Uh, you you sense palpable fear from the horse as you begin to talk about this. And we, it just... we came here with horses, right? I thought we lost them. Yeah, didn't we rode here with the horses, right? I suppose no. you guys would have... You had horses that you stabled up at... Uh, um, the Elven Village. Mm -hmm. Knowing that... The path up the mountain would not be suitable. Right. Oh god, I totally forgot about Potentially that. Potentially you could have taken them along. I decided that they'd run away. Okay. These kids, do they look like they could ride a horse? They're probably five and seven. It's going to be like that one scene from Two Towers where the mom puts oh, the kids on, exactly on the horses. Oh my god, Jevin is skating. <laughs> Just Akanta, can you talk to this horse and have it take them someplace? I can try. Hi, horse. Where's that snowy place again? Was that too far? Kresk is like Kresk? a whole day's oh. journey from here. But the it's priest at the priest in Volaki might take them. Well, mm -hmm. But the kids. He's actually a sound mind. That's Will be a, a um, potentially a difficult animal handling check to be able to tell the horse exactly what to do with these two children. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I will be willing to risk that. But you do so at advantage since you are using speak with animals. Okay, so one. So where do we want the kids to go? Two. I'm not gonna get. I think the before. the priest in Velaki is gonna be closer. Twenty four. Wow. I think. A, with a twenty four, so you look at the map and you describe the horse, telling the horse what to do. Um. It uh, sort of repeats mentally or whatever its directions you told back to it, you know. I go, I go right, mm -hmm. cross stone over water, mm -hmm. through forest, I go right, mm -hmm. more stone mm -hmm. over water, then tall building, building with the, with the horn. Mm -hmm. Can you remember I that? can do this, I can do this. So just mm -hmm. to clarify, which church are we sending them to? The one in Balaki. Oh, we're lucky. Okay. Yeah, not. The... I thought you were going Barovia, oh, but Barovia. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, I... Barovia works just... too. Whichever. Either one is fine. I was just, I was, I was jumping in here to, before the, uh, I was trying to jump in before the instruction. I can't talk. Instructions were given, um, because the dude in Velaki was kind of more level-headed than the dude in Barovia. Much more agreed, yeah. Um, I I only said because the one you mentioned was the one who lost his son who was yeah right and then and then I I was I threw it in earlier and I think it might have been missed in the midst of some conversation we could even yeah, send Velaki is, is obviously the better choice but well, what about sending him back to the brother Eastmark Eastmark yeah. I has he, has sure he, he hasn't got children I think the priest I think the priest in Velaki is probably the best choice mm -hmm. just of the people we've met. One quick second. And so Cyborg's going to go ahead and write a note real quick, yeah. just sort of describing just about to like, ask. these kids, like, we, like, hey, we're the adventuring party that's been going around burning stuff down. Um, Sorry for starting a coup uh, in your city. Found these, found these two kids inside uh, the, the wind, uh, the, yeah, the windmill with, and they, they were being contained by some night hags, two of the three hags were killed. Please look after these children. 
you know. And the horse. And the horse. The horse was promised sh- sugar and an apple. Mm-hmm. And oats. Uh, and now, just to be clear, this is one of your horses that you're yes. sending? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be, uh, they can use Cyborg's horse. Or no, Cyborg doesn't have a horse, buddy. Because technically the horses would have been for all the rest of you, right? We'd have need to, like, double up and shit on this if we were all riding, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah, he Which rode, uh, I remember him riding, didn't he double up with Claire? Because we had a mm-hmm. funny talk about the guts. Yeah. That's true. That is correct. Anyway. <laughs> so, that gets sent off. Okay. You feel like the horse knows what to do. I mean, which one's the older one, uh, DM? Is it Myrtle or Freak? Freak. All right, so I hand the note to Freak and say, give this to the priest in Velaki. I'm trying to find his name. Hold on. Maybe give. I have the name somewhere. I tell them the name. (laughs) That's all good, yeah. Maybe give them some money, Claire. Okay. Um... I believe it's Father Lucian Petrovich. Does that sound That's right? That's the one. Um, I will give them 10 gold wrapped up in a little pouch, and I will tell them to give this to Father Petrovich um, as um, money to use to take care of you. And if there is any further issue, um, Cyber, you should probably add this to your note. If there is any further issue with um, their upkeep um, we can it's not a big land he can find us, we'll pass by the area again we'll make sure that they're taken care of split the money up and put it in your shoes okay is that my advice? yeah he nods, they do so the horse is sent off towards Falaki. Right before the horse leaves, Jeswaldo removes his hat and puts it on the boy's head. <laughs> and as he does, the glamoured leather armour changes into something much more sinister and dark. And he says, Childish things belong with children. And all of you see this figure standing before you. And that's where we will leave off this evening's episode. <laughs>